Hallelujah. Shabbat shalom lekem. Shabbat shalom to our family that is online. My name is Korn Sheik Miyah ben Korn Levi ben Yisrael. Uh, may Yah even bless the memory of my father, Korn Levi ben Yisrael. And to all those who they, we rode on their shoulders and even allowed us to be where we're at right now. May Yah continue to bless all of those pioneers. We thank the Holy One of Israel for our lives this day. Thanking him for our presence. Thanking him for our safe arrival. Thanking him for our life to this day. That we, uh, has even granted us the breath of life once again to enjoy each other's company, even on another Holy Shabbat day, even during this uh, season that we're approaching. approaching uh, Shana Tova, uh, Happy New Year to all. And that we hope and pray that we would make uh, a righteous fuss over our new year. And that we would even be proud and we would say it loud, uh, just as the nations do when they New Year's comes in and they're hollering and fussing, but we do it in a righteous manner. And we pray that Yah would accept us all for his great name's sake. At this time, we're going to face the Mizracha, the eastward direction, which is this way. We're going to say a few words found in the book of uh, Numbers, the 10th chapter and the 35th verse. There were words that Moshe and the children of Israel said. It's called the Kuma, and we ask that Yah would even hear our prayers, even in these days and times. This big wilderness that we find ourselves in, may Yah continue to protect us, is my prayer. Hallelujah. Kuma, Yehovah, we are fusu oeveha, we are nusu mis aneha mi paneha. Kuma, Yehovah, we are fusu oeveha, we are nusu mis aneha mi paneha. Kuma, Yehovah, we are fusu oeveha, we are nusu mis aneha mi paneha. Translation. Rise up, O Yah, and let thine enemies be scattered. Let them that hate thee flee before thee. Now, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shabbat shalom lekem. Thanking the Creator for all of our families, and we pray that He would allow us to have a joyful day, a day of singing, rejoicing, a day of thinking, a day of rejoicing, and also learning and understanding what our role and what our responsibility is as an Israelite in these days and times. Let us even sing this song, Zeir HaShabbat. This is the Sabbath, and we say, Sami Akani, I am happy, and I hope and pray that each and every one of us are happy that we know Yah, and that we know His name, and that we can sing songs in the Hebrew language, and that we can give praise unto the Most High, because, you know, take it, don't take it for granted because you're an Israelite and that you know Him, but now it's the application thereof that is so important for us in these days and time. And so we know that we still have more work to do. We pray that Yah would even give us that willing heart and that willing spirit to do the work that is necessary for the reawakening of our people and the progression of our nation. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us sing Akshal. Zer Akani. Zer Hashaba, Same Akani. Ani ohe vayom shel Hashem. Ze et hayom hato, same akani. Ze et hayom hato, same akani. Ze et hayom hato, same akani. Ani ohe vayom shel Hashem. Ki Hashem hu shalak, o yami. Ki Hashem hu natak, o tibari, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Asher Kadash, Same Akani, Asher Kadash, Same Akani, Asher Kadash, Same Akani, Ani Ohe Vayom Shalashem, Ani Ohe Vayom Shalashem, from the top, Zeha Shabbat, Same this is a good day. Say it, I 
Hallelujah! <laughs> Ani ohe vayom shalashe Hallelujah Hallelujah Same akani ya Ohe vayom shalashe Hallelujah Ohe vayom shalashe Hallelujah Same akani ya Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Zeha Yom, Yeho Ose. This is the day that Yah has made, and we will be happy and rejoice in it. We are happy this day, O great King, because you have preserved our lives. We thank you, O great King, for constantly watching over us, O Yah, and being there for us, and even helping us on this journey of life. We thank you for allowing us to make it throughout this week, to make it to this precious moment, even the Holy Shabbat day. A day that you have sanctified and a day that you have put aside. And we are here this day to even follow your instructions, O oh Yah, to do the things that you have commanded to show our appreciation even unto you. Praying that you look down upon us and that you will even bless our efforts and bless our attempts to even return back to you in righteousness, O oh great King. You are a great King that deserves nothing but the utmost praise and respect. And we thank you to have the opportunity to call upon thy name. How great and how wonderful art thou, O Yah. You are the marvelous one, the magnificent one, the holy one. Blessed be thy name. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, may we forever proclaim thy name and thy greatness, O Yah. Thy wisdom is beyond our understanding, O great King on high. But we thank you because you have given us the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to know you in these days and times, even during these times of darkness, O oh Yah. We pray that you will continue to shine your light upon us, that we will be able to rejuvenate ourselves, that we will be able to be strong and strengthen ourselves when we feel weak, O oh great King, and even give others inspiration to even glorify you, O oh Yah. May you forever walk in thy truth and walk in thy peace. May you be with us through all the things that we may experience in life. Because you know we go through a lot, oh Yah. Sometimes it's overbearing, oh great King. Sometimes we may feel like we don't have what it takes to carry on. But we pray that you will give us strength this day. Even as we approach the holy season, even as we are upon the new year and the new month, oh Yah, we pray that you will give us a new spirit. We pray that you will give us a better understanding to know that you are in control of all things that we may experience in our life. We thank you for the good times, O oh Yah. And we pray to you during the challenging times, O oh Yah. Asking that you will be with us every step of the way. That we will not be led alone, O oh Yah. Because without you, how can we go forward? Without our guidance and our protection, how can we see or know which direction we're going in? Shuvah, Yehoah. Return, O Yah, to thy people as we strive to return back unto you. You are the hope and the confidence of all mankind, of all humanity. And we thank you for the portion that we have to even return back to you this day. Blessed be the great King. Elohe Abraham, Yiskak with Yisrael. Elohe called Olam, even the creator of all the world. Thou art great and wonderful. 
highly to be praised, magnified and exalted. There's none to be compared unto you, O Yah. Thou hast done all. Thou hast created all. Thou hast even brought us forth this day to even proclaim thy goodness and thy greatness, to proclaim thy fame, to say that there is none like the power of Abraham, Yitzchak, and Israel. There's none like the power that has created all things. We glorify, we praise, and we honor thee for all thy goodness and all thy mercy, all thy truth, and all thy consistency. Blessed be thy name, O Yah, our Father, our Rock, and our Redeemer, now and forevermore. Hallelujah! 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 Your kind! Your kind! Your kind! Anaknu Anka, Yisrael, Wazon, Amiteka. With no day, Lacha, Le Olam, Waed. With door, with door, when this I pay to heal our Teka. We are thy people and the flock of thy pasture. And we will give thee thanks forever. And we will tell of thy praise unto all generations. Selah. Yahweh Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Eloheinu, O Shema Yisrael. Eloheinu, Eloheinu, Yahweh. Hallelujah, O Baruch Shem Kebo, Maaku, Tole Olam, Maaku, Tole Olam, Maaku, Tole Olam, O Baruch Shem Kebo, Maaku, Tole Olam, Le Olam, Wai, and Elohe. Ain Elohe Kimo Yahua, Bele Hagado Le Ola, O Seraph Divarin de Flim, Yo Meko Yisrael Amen. Ain Elohe Kimo Yahua, Bele Hagado Le Ola, O Seraph Yo Merko Yisrael Amen Bangli There is no God like Yahuwah Great King of the universe Only do it wondrous things Let all Israel say Amen There is no God like Yahuwah Great King of the universe only do a wondrous things. Let all Israel say Amen. In Hebrew, Ain Elohe Kimo Yahuwah Melech Hagadole Olam O Serav Divarim Reflim Yo Meko Yisrael Amen Ain Elohe Kimo Yahuwah Mele Hagadole Ola O Serang Divarim Nepli Yo Meko Yisrael Amen Hallelujah You may be seated Giving thanks unto the Holy One of Israel once again We all must say Hallelujah For His mercies endure forever we pray that the Most High God would continue to watch over us and that he would hear even our voices as we join our voices together, as we say these prayers slowly and sincerely before Yah and praying that we would even internalize these words and that Yah would even be continually our comfort and our refuge in times of trouble. We pray that the Most High would continue to hear us as we say these words together. Blessed art thou, O Yehoah, our power, and blessed be the works of thy hands. And the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day and hallowed it, 
because that in it he rested from all his work, which Yah in creating had made. O thou who art most holy, look upon thy people in mercy. Power of Abraham, nurture us, O power of Yitzchak. Save us, we implore thee, O power of Israel. Blot us not out, O Yah, though our sins be many, but cast our evil doings into the bottomless pit to remain forevermore. Our hope is in thee, O Yah, and without thy mercy we have naught. Father of wisdom, thou dispenser of knowledge, cause our hearts to discern and our minds to retain thy law. Bless Israel to know thee as we did in the days of yore. Let the sign of the Shabbat shine brightly from this thy house and from us thy people, Israel. Let our voices mingle with the host of heaven as we joyfully proclaim, Blessed be the name of our power, and blessed be his holy day. Hallelujah. Shema. Shema. Israel. Yahuwah. Eloheinu. Shiru. Yahuwah Eloheinu Yahuwah Echa Yah is one Shem Kebo Mahuto Let us continue. This is the day which Yehoah hath made, and we will be glad and rejoice thereon. Unto thee do I lift up mine eyes, O thou that art enthroned in the heavens. Ascribe unto Yehoah the glory due unto his name. Worship Yehoah in the beauty of holiness. In thee, O Yah, do I take refuge. Let me never be ashamed. Thou hast given us joy in place of sorrow. Thy truth is like a heady wine. Shout for joy, O ye children of Israel. Proclaim the name of our king, to whom the sun doth shine and the wind sing. Jehovah is our sun and shield, who then come master us. To thee, power of our fathers, do we give honor and glory. For who is Yah besides thee? Be thou our judge, O Yah, against the ungodly nations. Save us, O our king, we beseech thee. Then shall we come clapping, singing, jumping, shouting, praising, crying, and extolling thy holy name. For with thee is the fountain of light, in thy light do we see light. Thy loving kindness, Yah, is in the heavens. Thy faithfulness reaches unto the skies. Depart from evil and do good, and dwell forevermore in peace. For Jehovah loveth justice and forsaken not his holy ones. Hallelujah, Shema. Shema Israel is one Baru Shem Kebo Mahuto Shem Kebo 
Power of Abraham, who did call our father from Chaldea? Art thou not he, O power of Israel? Where is the power of Yitzchak, who did bless him with the righteous Rivqua? Thou art one and the same. Who knoweth him who changed Yaakov's name? Thou, O Yah, will forever remain. Though Yosef sojourn in Egypt, yet did all men show him favor. Thy hand, O Yah, was with him. Thou didst hold Moshe and Israel against Pharaoh, who stood up the mighty Red Sea. Manna dropped from heaven to sustain thy people in the wilderness. They fashioned a calf to bow down to. Yet to Israel didst thou show mercy. We give thanks unto thee, O Yah, and we will tell of thy wondrous works. In Yehuda is Yah known, his name is great in Israel. His foundation is in the holy mountains. We will sing of the mercies of Jehovah forever unto all generations. We will make them to be known. Stay thou, O Yah, in the midst of us. Cause righteousness once more to be sown. So shall the heavens praise thy wonders, Yah. Thy faithfulness in the holy assembly. Let Yisrael awaken the day with their praises. Glory to Yah now and forevermore. Hallelujah. Shema. Shema Yisrael Yahuwah Eloheinu Yahuwah Earnestly will I seek thee. Hear my voice, merciful Father. Preserve me from mine enemies. Send out thine angels to protect us. O thou that hearest prayer. With thy mighty hand, Yah, subdue all those that hate us. Remember us in mercy, Yah, and pardon all our transgressions. Except our power doth bless us, how could we hope to prosper? Unless our Creator protect us, we are as if we had not been. Say thy hand, O death, for he doth forgive our iniquities. So will I sing praises to his name, that I may perform my vow. The dead praise not Jehovah, nay, nor any that go down into silence. Let us extol our power while we have life. Sing praises to our power while we have any being. Together we will lift up our voices and gratefully sing. Withhold not thy voice from extolling our maker. Let young and old praise him together. Let the tribes come near and testify. Even the tribes of Israel, the mighty of Yahuwah. Say among the nations, Yahuwah reigneth. Thy power, Israel, over all the world. For Yahuwah will not cast off his people. Neither will he forsake his inheritance. Thy testimonies are very sure. Holiness becometh thine house, now, O Yah, and forevermore. 
哈利路亚，什么？Shema Yisrael, Yahuwah Eloheinu, Yahuwah Elo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At this time, we would like to sing this song called Hatora. You may face the front. However, we are going to petak Hatora even at this time to open the book of the law, so that we may call some of our brothers and some of our sisters to read in the portion that is designated for today. That portion being called Sedir Tzal, and we will talk and speak about that name a little later on in the day. But first, let us even sing proudly and loudly the song Hatora. Because Yah has even given us the Torah, the law, the instructions in our midst once again, even in the foreign land, and we thank Yah even for that, the gift of the Torah once again. So let us sing Petach Hatorah. Hatorah, Hatorah, Petach Hatorah. Shall we return unto thee, for thy words to be fulfilled by thy Lord, by thy Lord? In our hearts, it is to be in still. To each other in the spirit of true righteousness by thy Lord, by thy Lord, is the only way we. Hallelujah. The blessings for the Torah can be found on the screen. It is a call and answer. May Yah even be pleased 
and may he find even these words acceptable in the highest courts of his glory. I ask that you would even silence your cell phone or put it on vibrate, whatever you have to do. Please, we do not want any distractions, even during this Torah service. Nikraet Kohen shake me up and let me bend Israel. Anipo Baruch Hashem Shel Yahuwah Baruch Yahuwah Yom Yom Baruch Yahuwah Tamid Uvaruch Haba Likra Et Hatora Mode Ani Lapaneka Yahuwah Natan Lanu Et Hatora Hallelujah. We ask that all females be seated. All males, please remain standing before Yehovah, all males, young and old alike. Pray that the Most High would even hear these words as we are going to read from the book of Wayikra, Leviticus, the eighth chapter, and we're going to begin our Hebrew reading in the 16th verse, concluding in the 36th verse. Once again, Leviticus chapter eight, verses 16 through 36. Again, today it's Sedir Tzau, hallelujah, which means command. Leviticus, the eighth chapter, starting from the 16th verse to and including the 36th verse. I will be reading verses 16 through 18, even at this time. Hallelujah. Why ye quack et ko ha kelev, ashir al ha kwerev, where it yoted hakaved, where it shate haklayot, where it hell behem, where yaktir moshe hamiz beha, where it ha pard, where it oro, where it besaro, where it pirisho, saraf ba esh me hoots la mahane, ha ashir siwa yohoa et moshe, where yakre et el haola, where ye smeku aharon uvanao, et yedehem al rosh ha ayil. Hallelujah. And he took all the fat that was upon the inwards, and the lobe of the liver, and the two kidneys, and their fat, and Moshe made it smoke upon the altar. But the bullock and its skin, and its flesh, and its dung, were burnt with fire without the camp, as Jehoah commanded Moshe. And the ram with the burnt offering was presented, and Aharon and his sons laid their hand upon the head of the ram. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sheatahu Eloheinu, Welohe Avotenu, Avram Yishak, We Yaakov le Olamwae, Nikura et Mishare Natan Yahu Bain Lewi Bain Yisrael. Baruk Yahua Yom Yom, Baruk Yahua Tamid, Uva Rukaba Likra et Hatora. Hallelujah. Misharet Natanya, who will be reading verses 19 through 21. Wayishkat, Wayiz Roch Moshe, et Hadam al Hametzbeach Saviv, or et Ha Ayil Nitak, Lin Takhao, Wayachter Moshe, et Harosh, or et Han Tahim, or et Hapader, or et Hakwerev, or et Ha. Hakraim, Rakat Bamaim, Wayakter Moshe, et Koha Ail Hamitzbeak, O La Hu, the Reak Nikoak, Ishe Hu, La Yehoa, Kaashir Ziwa, Yehoa et Moshe. Hallelujah. Amen. And when it was killed, Moshe dashed the blood against the altar round about. And when the ram was cut into its pieces, Moshe made the head and the pieces and the suet smoke. And when the inwards and the legs were washed with water, Moshe made the whole ram smoke upon the altar. It was a burnt offering for a sweet savor. It was an offering made by fire unto Yehoah, as Yehoah commanded Moshe. Hallelujah. <laughs> We Yaakov le Olamwae, Nikura et Mishare Shimuel ben Lewi ben Yisrael. Baruch Yahoah Yom Yom, 
Baruch Yahuwah Tami, Uvaruch Habalik Ra'ed HaTorah. Hallelujah. Mishare Shmua will be reading verses 22 through 24. We are at Aio Hashini, Eo Amiluim, Wais Meku, Aaron Uvanao at Gedehem, Al Rosh Haayo. Wais Hat, Waihwak Moshe, Midamo, Waitain Al Tanu, Wizen Haaron. Hai minit wa al bohen yado. Waya manit wa al. Hai manit wa al bohen. Raglo. Hai manit. Waya krev et bene haaron. Waya ten moshe. Min hadam al tenuk. Tenuk. As nam. Hai manit wa al bohen. Yadam. Hai manit wa al bohen. Raglam. Hai manit. Wa is rok Moshe el Hadam et Hadam al misbek ak savi. Hallelujah. Amen. Start again, Bubakusha. And the other ram was presented, the ram of consecration. And Aharon and his sons laid their hands upon the head of the ram. And when it was slain, Moshe took the blood thereof and put it upon the tip of Aharon's right ear mm -hmm. and upon the thumb of his right hand right. and upon the great toe of his right foot. Mm -hmm. And Aharon's sons were brought, and Moshe put the blood upon the tip of their right ear, and upon the thumb of their right hand, mm -hmm. and upon the great toe of their right foot. And Moshe dashed the blood against the altar round about. Hallelujah. Modim anachnula sheatahu eloheinu, welohe avotenu, Avram Yitzchak. We Yaakov le olam wa'ed Nikura et ak oren ben Yisaskar ben Yisrael Baruch Yahowah yom yom Baruch Yahowah tami Uvaruch ha-ba'alik ra'ed ha-torah Hallelujah! Akoren will be reading verses 25 through 27. Waikwak et ha kelev we et ha al ya we et tal ha kelev asher al ha kerev we et yo teret ha kaved we et Shite hak layot we et kel vehi we et shok hayam im umisal hamat sot asher lifne yohoa lakwak kal lat matza akhat we kalat lechem. Shemen akhat wa rakuik ekhad wa yatsein al hakal lavin wa al shok hai yamin wa yitain et akov al kafe aharon wa al kafe banao wa Ya neif otan te nufa yifne yehoa. Hallelujah. Amen. And he took the fat and the fat tail and all the fat that was upon the inwards and the lobe of the liver and the two kidneys and their fat and the right thigh and out of the basket of unleavened bread that was before Yehoah, he took one unleavened cake and one cake of oiled bread and one wafer and placed them on the fat and upon the right thigh. And he put the whole upon the hands of Aharon and upon the hands of his sons and waved them for a wave offering before Yehovah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Avraham Yitzchak. 
We ya akovle olamwa e Nikura et akazio ben kohen shet mia ben kohen levi ben Yisrael Baruch Yahuwah yom yom Baruch Yahuwah tamid Uvaruch haba alikura et ha Torah Hallelujah. Akazio will be reading verses 28 through 30. Why ye quack Moshe O Tom, me al, Kapehem, why ye bayak tear, Amis Bayak al, Haola, Nibuim Haim, Ladeag Nikoak, Ishe Hu La Yehoah. Why ye quack Moshe et He Kaze, Wani Fehu, Tenufa, Leaf Ne Yehoah, Me El. Amiluim, the Moshe, Haya, the Manaka, Asher, Tiwa, Yehoah, and Moshe. Why you quack Moshe, Meshemen, Hamishka, Umin, Adam, Asher, Al, Hamish Bayak, Wayaz, Al, Aharon, Al, Bagadal, Al, Banal, Waal, Big Day, Banal, Ito, Wayak Day, Sika, Et Aharon, Et Bagadal, Et Banal, Et Big Day. By now, Ito. Hallelujah. Amen. And Moshe took them from off their hands and made them smoke on the altar upon the burnt offering. They were a consecration offering for a sweet savor. It was an offering made by fire unto Yehoah. And Moshe took the breast and waved it for a wave offering before Yehoah. It was Moshe's portion of the ram of consecration, as Yehoah commanded Moshe. And Moshe took of the anointing oil and of the blood which was upon the altar, and sprinkled it upon Aharon, and upon his garments, and upon his sons, and upon his sons' garments, and sanctified Aharon, and his garments, and his sons, and his sons' garments with them. Hallelujah. Avraham <laughs> We Yaakov le olam wa'ed Nikura et akot shakira bat lewi ben Yisrael Baruch Yahowah yom yom Baruch Yahowah tamid Uvaruch haba'a likura et ha-Torah Hallelujah! Kot Shakira will be reading verses 31 through 33 Wayomir Moshe el Aharon wa el Panau Bashlu et Habasar Petach o hel Moed wa Sham Tochlu Oto wa et Halechem Ashir Besal Ha Hamiluim ka Ashir Tiweti le Mor Aharon Uvanau Yochluhu Wahanotar Sika Wahanotar Babasar Uval Uvala Uvalahem Ve Aish Tis Tis Rofu Tis Rofu Umi Petach O Helmo Ed Lo Tat Tates U Shiv At Yamim Ad Yom Melo Melot Yeme Milu Milu Ehem Ki Shiv At Yamim Yeme Hallelujah. Amen. And Moshe said unto Aharon and to his sons, Boil the flesh at the door of the tent of meeting, and there eat it, and the bread that is in the basket of consecration, as I commanded, saying, Aharon and his sons shall eat it, mm -hmm. and that which remaineth of the flesh and of the bread shall ye burn with fire. And ye shall not go out from the door of the tent of meeting right. seven days mm -hmm. until the days of your consecration be fulfilled. For he shall consecrate for he shall consecration be fulfilled. He shall consecrate he, you seven days. For he shall consecrate you for seven days. Hallelujah. <laughs> We ya akoble olamwae Nikura et hamaftira le shabat haze sedere sao 
Nikra et ak malkiel ben ak ushmaratia ben lewi ben Yisrael. Ani po baruch Hashem shel Yehovah. Baruch Yehovah yom yom. Baruch Yehovah tamid. Uvaruch haba likra et ha Torah. Mori ani lefenek Yehovah asher natan la nu et ha Torah. Hallelujah. Ak malkiel will be reading. Verses 34 through 36 to finish us out. Ka'ashir asa bayom haze. Ziwa Yehoah la asot. La kapeerd alechem. Uftak ohel mo'ed. Teshvu yomam. Walayla shtiv ad yamim. Ushmar tem. Et mimish meret Yehoah walo. Tamunu, Tamutu, Tamutu, Sika, Ki Kane, Ziwati, Waya, Waya As, Akarion, Aharon, Aharon, Sika, Vivanao, Et, Kol, Hadbarim, Ashir, Ziwa Yahua, Benai Moshe, Bayad Moshe. Okay, hallelujah. As hath, as hath been done this day. So Yehoah hath commanded to do, to make atonement for you. And at the door of the tent of meeting shall ye abide day and night, seven days, and keep the charge of Yehoah, that ye die not. For so I am commanded. And Aharon and his sons did all the things which Yehoah commanded by the hand of Moshe. Hallelujah. <laughs> Avraham Yishak, we Yaakov le Olamayin. All yours, my Lord. And Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom Laka. Family at the temple, you may be seated. Good All right. So this week's portion is in the chapter, uh, chapter seven of Jeremiah. Um, Jeremiah prophesied during the Tolumpius period in the history of ancient Israel around the time of the Babylonian exile. Um, in this portion, Jeremiah is addressing the people who had gathered at the temple in Jerusalem to worship, warning them that their offerings and sacrifices are not enough to save them from the Most High's wrath. Um, the connection between this portion and the Sidra is the offerings, because um, we're going to learn about all the different offerings that we do and how the priests are supposed to take carry them out, um, and we can get into it whenever you're ready, Zakwain, or Itan Sika. Um, what verse was it? Thus saith Yehoah of hosts, the power of Israel, add your burnt offering unto your sacrifices, and eat ye flesh. For I spoke not unto your fathers, nor commanded them in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt, concerning burnt offerings or sacrifices. So but in this point, Sika, so in this point in history, Jeremiah, like I said, he's talking to the people. Um, that are gathered doing sacrifices and stuff. You think that's, oh, okay, they're trying to do good, but really it's not. Um, at this point in history, Samaria or the Northern Kingdom was already taken by the Assyrians. And during this time, the Most High was sending the Babylonian Empire to take the tribe of Judah that was left. And right now, all of them are gathered at the temple saying, oh, you know, forgive us, forgive us. We don't want to get taken away. But at this point, the most I was like, listen, it's too late. Y'all messed up so many times. Y'all had time and time again to do what's right. So now all these sacrifices that you're bringing up, you might as well eat them. I don't want them. I'm shooting. But this thing I commanded them, saying, hearken unto my voice, and I will be your power. And ye shall be my people, and walk ye in all the way that I commanded you that it may be well with you. But they hearkened not, nor inclined their ear, but walked in their own counsels, even in the stubbornness of their evil heart, 
and went backward and not forward, even since the day that your fathers came forth out of the land of Egypt unto this day. And though I have sent unto you all my servants, the prophets, sending them daily be time and often so yet, most the most high is basically saying that i've given you a chance multiple i've sent my prophets many times my judges isaiah came before jeremiah so they had plenty of opportunities to make it right do the right thing follow the instructions because the most high didn't want us to give sacrifices he didn't that wasn't commanded originally because abraham was given sacrifices even before it was written into law sacrifices meant more than just giving and offering up something because you can't really offer anything to the most high but you can show your uh gratitude and you know you can worship him and pray to him and other stuff but the real physical things he's not actually getting so that's how they thought about it in that day and time. Oh, I'll give this to you and my debt is paid off. That kind of thing. That's how they thought about their spirituality. Their spiritual level was at such an all-time low that they didn't really think about the true meaning of what an, an offering was. Yet they hearkened not unto me, nor inclined their ear, but made their necks stiff. They did worse than their fathers. And thou shalt speak all these words unto them, but they will not hearken to thee. Thou shalt also call unto them, but they will not answer thee. Therefore thou shalt say unto them, This is the nation that hath not hearkened to the voice of Jehovah their power, nor received correction. Faithfulness is perished, and is cut off from their mouth. Cut off thy hair, and cast it away and take up a lamentation on the high hills. For Yehoah hath rejected and forsaken the generation of his wrath. For the children of Yehuda have done that which is evil in my sight, saith Yehoah. They have set their detestable things in the house whereon my name is called to defile it. And they have built the high places of Tophet, which is in the valley of the son of Hinnom to burn their sons and their daughters in the fire, which I commanded not, neither came it into my mind. So we were so lost that we were burning our children in the fire, a practice that a lot of the heathens did in that day and time. They thought they would get more children by killing the children they already have. That's how lost we were. So, I mean, we can put this into today's perspective. The Most High is not looking for us to offer bullocks and cattle and rams and all that stuff because we don't have it right now. We don't we don't have those things. But what he wants from us is to not try to put on a show, not trying to show out and trying to, oh, I'm so righteous and holier than thou. He wants genuine change, genuine change. He wants us to try to be a better people, be kinder to one another, try not to oppress each other, lie to each other. And, you know, lying goes into all the other things of gossip and slander. He wants us to be accountable for our mistakes and shortcomings. That's the kind of change that the Most High is asking for us from that for now, because that's what we have to offer. Therefore, behold the days to come, saith Jehovah, that it shall be no more called Tophet nor the valley of the son of Hinnom, but the valley of slaughter. For they shall bury in Tophet for lack of room, and the carcasses of this people shall be food for the fowls of the heaven, and for the beast of the earth, and none shall frighten them away. Then will I cause to cease from the cities of Yehuda, and from the streets of the Jerusalem, the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness, and the voice of bridegroom and the voice of the bride, for the land shall be desolate. At that time, saith Jehovah, they shall bring out the bones of the kings of Yehuda, and the bones of his princes, and the bones of the priest, and the bones of the prophets, and the bones of the inhabitants of Jerusalem out of their graves, 
and they shall spread them before the sun and the moon and all the host of heaven whom they have loved and whom they have served and after whom they have walked and whom they have sought and whom they have worshiped they shall not be gathered nor be buried they shall be dung upon the face of the earth and death shall be chosen rather than life by all the residue that remain of this evil family that remain in all the places whither i have driven them saith Yehovah of hosts most high goes on to say that not only you will be punished right even the kings and the prophets that died way before you their car their bones are going to be spread on the ground so we can apply that in today's time when you do wrong or you do evil it's not only going to affect you like you're not the only one that's going to get that the most high can punish you in various ways he has more imagination than all of us he could target your children your loved ones the money that you care so much about the most high doesn't he makes sure that his punishments are original okay we can't even come up with them the most high created a new thing he put us into slavery Slavery has been around for a long time, but it was never on the basis of race or anything like that. It was never to this extent that we've experienced in this day and time. We'll continue to chapter, um, the next chapter, chapter nine, 922. Thus saith Jehovah, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am Jehovah who exercise mercy, justice, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith Jehovah. So we don't want to end the portion on a bad note talking about how the creator is going to destroy us we already went through all of that we've we've been punished sevenfold right now it's a time for us to come back to him to continue to try to do what's right put our best foot for best foot forward and trying to right the wrongs that our forefathers did back in that time we pray that the most high continues to look after us, to forgive us, to accept us when we try to put our best into whatever we do. This, the, the lesson of this portion is that the true worship of the creator is not about just outward rituals and it's more about inner repentance and a changed heart. We can apply it today by recognizing that simply going through the motions of religion or participating in the activities is not just it's not enough to praise to please Yah. We must strive to live morally upright lives and seek forgiveness for our sins. And we can apply this lesson by recognizing that dishonesty and deception can also cause harm to ourselves and others, and that we should strive to be truthful, trustworthy in our words and actions. This includes being honest in our dealings with others avoiding gossip and slander, and being accountable for our mistakes and shortcomings. Hallelujah. What a wonderful job. Akmal Kiel, Toda for that rendition, and Toda for your beautiful words and uh, elevated words. We pray that the Most High would even allow those words to be upon us, upon our children, the adults as well, and may Yah continue to bless this great nation of Israel. Toda Akmal Kiel for those words. Come in truly from a young man in our midst, and I pray that the Most High will continue to bless you to uh, be one of the examples, the righteous examples in days to come. Hallelujah. Amen. And all of our young brothers and all of our young sisters here, that you all would be righteous examples uh, for this great nation and a representative, a true righteous representative of the Most High God. We need more righteous people to represent the Creator. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Yah. Would you please stand before Yehovah?
and let us sing HaTorah. However, this time we will sing Segor, which means to close the book of the law in the Hebrew, as we have finished now calling upon our brothers and sisters. And now we'll have someone now uh, interpret or break down the portion or the entire portion of the sigil called Sal in a few moments as we would get a better understanding in English, but hopefully one day that our Most High, the Creator, would bless us to even have these services in our language of Hebrew, one day where we could speak and call upon each other in Hebrew and answer in Hebrew and sing in Hebrew and all these things. Well, I'm talking to you right now that the person, the Kohen, the Mori, the Mishari, would now be talking to you in Ivri and we would understand each other without any problems. So blessed be the name of the Most High. In days to come, it will happen. Hallelujah. Let us sing HaTorah. HaTorah HaTorah Segor HaTorah We del Whereby shall we return unto thee, for thy word to be fulfilled by thy Lord, by thy Lord. Our hearts it is to be instead. to each other in the spirit of true righteousness by thy Lord by thy Lord is the Hallelujah. Shabbat shalom lekem. Shabbat shalom to our family online. We, we thank you. We welcome you to our services uh, for this Shabbat. And thank you the Most High for your lives and the lives of your family as well. Torah Yah for those who have just walked in. Torah Yah for your safe arrival. And we pray that the Most High will continue to bless us even in this building. Our family online, may Yah bless you and continue to protect you even in your homes as you would even follow along with us even on this holy Shabbat day. May he bless all the sick of the house of Israel. Uh, we apologize. Somehow our prayer list uh, for the sick got lost uh, within transition, so we just have to create a new one. But may Yah bless all of our brothers and sisters that are sick and ill in the nation of Israel. May he bless uh, Ima Naomi at this time as she was uh, taken to the hospital this morning, the Ima of Kot uh, Latara, may Yah bless her, give her strength uh, where she is weak, and we pray that Yah would even hear our prayers on behalf of her, Ima Hevinia, all of the families. We pray for each and every one of them, James Goldwire, may Yah bless and keep them. So let us sing the song, Unity. May Yah continue to unify us. It was good to see our brother Otis back in the building uh, after so many months. Torah Yah. Uh, 
his grandson was in the hospital in the intensive care unit, and y'all brought him out of that. And so now, Yah is great and merciful. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Most High. Let us even look, join our voices together. We thank you for the family that is here, our brother, our sister, all of us. Um, Jalal, good to see you again, my brother. And uh, even on a, uh, a much more greater and beautiful occasion, because we seem to be meeting each other on other occasions, and we know what that's about, right? But now that you're here, we can enjoy the Shabbat day together. Our sister Fatima and her children, we thank you even for your, uh, your newborn, Hadassah. All praises to the Holy One of Israel. Let us unify our voices and sing in unity. Fingers spread, our hand is weak. How to gain the strength you seek. Close that hand and make a fist. Send that power to the rim. Arm in arm, hand in hand, that's the only way to stand. Unity will make us free, right up under y'all, with unity. A chain that has a chain that has a weekend lead. Man, let the car go. Slip and sing. Repair that chain and make it fast. A strength and chain is made to last. Arm in arm, in arm, hand in hand, that's the only way to stand. Unity will make us free, right up under y'all, with unity, togetherness. Togetherness will make us strong. Unity shall be our song. Our strength lies in the will to be right up under y'all with unity. Arm in arm. Amen, amen, amen. That's the only way to stand. Unity, 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 unity will make us free. It's gonna make us free under Yah with unity. Let's sing together this once again. Togetherness, togetherness will make us strong. Unity shall be our song. Our strength lies in the will to be right up under Yah. With unity, arm in arm, arm in arm, arm in arm. And that's the only way to stand. Unity will make us free, right up under ya. Take it out, drummers, take it out. Thank you. 
la ya ho wa 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 yom la ya ho wa tami la ya ho wa la ya ho wa la ya ho wa la ya ho wa to ya we give the glory come on To y'all be the glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lola nu, Yehovah, Lola nu. Kila Shem. Not unto us, oh yeah, not unto us, but unto thy name do we give glory. in this holy season that is approaching in this new year in this new month praise Jehovah come on brothers come on praise Jehovah come on what do you say now come on praise Jehovah Reshi kak ma gira yahua Reshi kak ma gira yahua 
Reshi Kakma Yira Yahua 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 Come on Reshi Kakma Yira Yahua Come on Reshi Kakma Yira Reshi Kakma Yira Yahua, 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 Yahua. Reshi Kakma Yira, Reshi Kakma Yira, Reshi Kakma Yira, Yahua, Yahua. Yahoo, 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 come on, praise your hope. Hallelujah! 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 Yahai! 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 Hallelujah! Please be seated. Man, just get off a little praising, you know. Hallelujah! Amen. Amen. <laughs> Blessed be the name of Yah. Let us welcome, even at this time. Uh, just so proud of her and all those young men and women that are getting ready to graduate high school and off to college, watching them grow up from when they were so tiny and little. So I quote Yadea, uh, we haven't seen her in a while. Please let us welcome her to read the eighth proverb. Hallelujah. Amen. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. La. You can read it off the screen. Okay. Eighth proverb. Okay, proverb eight. Doth not wisdom call and understanding put forth her voice in the top of high places by the way, where the paths meet she standeth besides the gate at the entry of the city. At the coming in at the door, she crieth aloud. Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of men. O you thoughtless, understand prudence, and you fools, be ye of an understanding heart. Therefore, I will speak excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right things. For my mouth shall utter truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. Mm -hmm. There is nothing perverse or crooked in them. Mm -hmm. They are all plain to him that understandeth, and right to them that find knowledge. Receive my instructions and not silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all things desirable are not to be compared unto her. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence, and find out knowledge of devices. The fear of Yehovah is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy, and the evil way, and the froward mouth do I hate. Counsel is mine, and sound wisdom. I am understanding, power is mine. By me kings reign, and princes decree justice. By me, princes rule, and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. I love them that love me, and those that seek me earnestly shall find me. Riches and honor are with me, yea, enduring riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, yea, than fine gold, and my produce than choice silver. I walk in the way of righteousness in the midst of the path of justice, that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance, and that I may fill their treasuries. Jehovah made me as the beginning of his way, the first of his works of old. I was set up from everlasting from the beginning, wherever the earth was. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills was I brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the beginning of the dust of the world. When he established the heavens, I was there. When he set a circle upon the face of the deep, when he made from the skies above, when the fountains of the deep showed their might, 
when he gave to the sea his decree that the waters should not transgress his commandments, when he appointed the foundations of the earth, then I was by him as an orphan, and I was daily all delight, playing always before him, playing in his habitable earth, and my delights are with the sons of men. Now therefore, ye children, hearken unto me, for happy are they that keep my ways. Hear instructions, and be wise, and if you can not. Happy is the man that hearkeneth to me, watching daily at my gate, waiting at the post of my doors. For whoso findeth me, findeth life, and obtaineth favor of Yehovah. But he that makes me wrong is his own soul. All they that hate me love death. Hallelujah. 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 I want to thank the Most High for my life and for the lives of all of you, for guiding us continuously and being with us and watching over us. Pray, hope, God, and glory to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord Arba, quote your day for reading for us the eight Proverbs, this holy Shabbat day. May the Most High continue to guide you, and may he continue to lead you in the path of righteousness, and may you continue to excel uh, in your learning in the schools of uh, higher learns of, you know, uh, education and things like that. And may Yah continue to bless you and your siblings, your Abba, your Ima, and may the Most High continue to give you much success. Hallelujah. Amen. This time I ask if you would stand before Yah. And let us even give Yah the glory. First we say, first giving all honor and glory to Yah, our power, creator, and maker of all. We thank Yah for Sa'a Haron, the leader of this community, the elders, the Kohanim, Mori, Misharatim, Shomrim, all the men, women, and children of this community and abroad. And we all say, hallelujah, 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 Yah Kai, Yah Kai, Yah Kai. At this time, we're going to even dismiss the class. Are we having Shabbat school class? Can all the children please go with the teacher? Bakasha, Benhira, At the same time, those that will remain here, let us welcome even the teacher of this portion of today, even Sao, let us welcome warmly and let us receive him. Even Mishare Shimuel Ben Lewi Ben Yisrael. Hallelujah! 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 Yahai! 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 Shabbat shalom l'kol. First and foremost, allow me to give all honor and all glory to Yehovah, all power, all savior, all rock, and our redeemer. It is a beautiful thing to stand before you on this holy Shabbat day to speak on the words of Yehovah. I pray that the words of my lips and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in his sight on this holy Shabbat day. We pick up our portion of our history in the book of Leviticus, or Yikra. We begin in chapter 6, verses 1, through chapter 8, verses, I think, to the end of the chapter, 36. Once again, our portion for today, Shabbat Sao, can be found in the book of Leviticus, chapter 6, verse 1, through chapter 8, verse 36. The book of Leviticus is one of those books that unfortunately is overlooked and is underread. It's one of the books that is perceived as one of the more boring books, but this book is very, very powerful. And if you really dwell, delve into it and look at it on a deeper level, you will see the power of Yehoah in the way in which this book was constructed. Many times you read this book and we we just hear of the offerings, and we say to ourselves, because we're not doing the offerings in our midst, it's not important. But if we read deeply into the book, we'll see that there is much more that we can gather from, not, from, from the book of Leviticus rather than just the mere offerings that we have. If we look at how the book of Leviticus is constructed, we will see that Moshe, through the hand of Yehovah, did it in a very eloquent manner. And I don't think it's by any... I don't think it was something that was not done intentionally. If you look at how it was constructed, it was constructed in a very symmetrical manner. 
to the middle of the book, the center of the book, if you go to the next slide, it speaks of one of the most important holy days that we have, the day of Yom Kippur. To the beginning of the book, from chapters 1 to chapter 7, is very parallel, and it mirrors the end of the book, chapters 23 to 27. And that speaks specifically of the rituals, what we're going to conclude today, the offerings. And then when we get to chapter 8 through 10, we will begin a part of that this week, and we'll delve more into it next week. That section also mirrors the other end of the, the, the actual book of Leviticus, chapter 22, 21 to 22. And then we have purity from chapter 11 to 15, and it's also mirrored in chapter 17 to 20. So you have a sense of symmetry that's happening that's leading up to the day of Yom Kippur, one of the most important holy days that we have. So this week, we will conclude the entire portion when it comes to the offerings that Yehovah commanded Moshe to give unto Aharon and his sons. Again, we're going to see, and we've learned over the last few weeks, the importance of these offerings. And by now, we should know what those five offerings are. If not, by the end of this portion, we should be able to have a clear synopsis as to what are those offerings and the purposes of those offerings as well. So we begin our portion in the book of Leviticus, chapter 6, verse 1. And Jehoah spoke unto Moshe, saying, Command Aharon his son, saying, This is the law of the burnt offering. It is that which goeth up on its firewood upon the altar all night unto the morning. And the fire of the altar shall be kept burning thereby. And the priest shall put on his linen garment and his linen breeches. Shall he put upon his flesh? And he shall take up the ashes whereto the fire hath consumed the burnt offering on the altar. And he shall put them beside the altar. And he shall put off his garment and put on other garments and carry forth the ashes without the camp unto a clean place. And the fire upon the altar shall be kept burning thereby. It shall not go out. And the priest shall kindle wood on it every morning. And he shall lay the burnt offering in order upon it and shall make smoke thereon the fat of the peace offerings. Fire shall be kept burning upon the altar continually. It shall not go out. Okay, now we see here the burnt offering, and the burnt offering is the ola, which basically means completely consume or to go up. If you look at the word ola, if we look at it in the PL stem, we will see that it's translated to ila, which means to elevate. And that's really what this offering is doing, and all of the offerings, it's allowing us to elevate spiritually before Yehovah. Remember, we're now coming out of the land of Egypt, and we have really cast a bitter taste on the tongue of Yehovah, if I may use it that way, because we've just built the golden calf. We're not commanded to do so. So we're striving, and Yehovah has given us a formula to some extent to remain that relationship that we've broken with him. So by bringing up these offerings, it's an opportunity for us to amend the wrongs that we've done before him. The burnt offering is the offering or one of the only offerings or is the only offering that is wholly consumed. The entire thing is placed on the ark. It is burned completely. And as we can see here, this offering was supposed to continuously be burnt on the, the altar. We also see here that in addition to the actual rules of the offerings, we see that a specific Garment should be worn, and we know the linen is one of the garments that keeps you cool. Think of the Kohanim, the priests that are standing there in front of that fire all day. They can easily sweat. So Yehovah in his wisdom is saying, put on the linen garments. These are garments that, that breeds, allows you to stay cool when you're doing this offering before him. All of these regulations is given to Moshe, that's to be given to Aharon, should be taken very carefully, because we will see in, in the coming weeks, if we do not follow the instructions, our life can be threatened, and the lives of the Levites specifically. So this offering, again, speaks of the burnt offering. As we continue in the seventh verse, we're going to go on to the meal offering, which is known as the minka. Now starting back up in the seventh verse. Okay. And this is the law of the meal offering. The sons of Aharon 
shall offer it before Yehoah in front of the altar, and he shall take up therefrom his handful of the fine flour of the meal offering. And of the oil thereof, and all the frank incense which is upon the meal offering, and shall make the memorial part thereof smoke upon the altar for a sweet savior unto Jehovah. And that which is left thereof shall Aharon and his sons eat. It shall be eaten without leaven in a holy place. In the court of the tent of meeting, they shall eat it. It shall not be baked with leaven. I have given it as their portion of my offerings made by fire. It is most holy as the sin offering and as the guilt offering. Every male among the children of Aharon may eat of it, as I do forever throughout your generations, from the offerings of Jehovah made by fire. Whatsoever toucheth them shall be holy. Right. Unlike the burnt offering, we see that was wholly consumed. With the meal offering, we see that Aharon and the Levites, they can partake of this offering. As we see here, a part of that offering is taken, and the ingredients, the three main ingredients that we have here would be the fine flour, the frankincense, and also the oil. And we can see here that different, there are different ways that it can be prepared. It can be baked, you can make a wafer with it, and it also can be fried. But what's most important is that we should not allow it to have leavening. So we cannot add any rising agent into this offering because we're coming with a humble spirit before Jehovah. This offering is usually given with your first fruits. We're agrarian people. Jehovah blessed us throughout the year. He's allowed our farm to be bountiful, to be blessed. And as a result, we take a portion of that and bring it forth as a meal offering. To say Torah to Jehovah for blessing us with food. So this is an opportunity for us in this day and time as well. We're not able to do the offerings. But we can offer the offerings of our lips before Jehovah. We can say Torah to Jehovah for blessing us with food each and every day of our lives. And if we want to go farther, let's understand too that in our hearts, we can find other ways to say Torah to Jehovah. We can go to many orphanages. We can go to the homeless, those that don't have a home. We can take meals unto them. We cannot look at this portion and say, oh, this is done away with, so let's just forget about it. If we're striving to be righteous, we should strive to find ways in which we can do the law, even in the land of our captivity. If Jehovah blesses you to get a raise at your job, I'm sure you know someone that has just lost their job. Give them a helping hand. If you have extra food in your house, your cabinets are filled, there is someone that don't have enough food to eat. The kindness in our hearts should allow us to say, hey, let me put a helping hand to this brother, this sister to help them. So as much as we were reading this portion, and we know that because we're in the land of our captivities, we cannot comply with this law, we can find other means to lend a helping hand to the children of Israel. In doing so, we're giving praises to Yehovah. And Yehovah spoke unto Moshe, saying, This is the offering of Aharon and his sons, which they shall offer unto Yehovah in the day when he is anointed. The tenth part of an ephah, of fine flour for a meal offering perpetually, half of it in the morning and half of it thereof in the evening. On a griddle it shall be made with oil. When it is soaked, thou shalt bring it in. In broken pieces shalt thou offer the meal offering for a sweet savor unto Jehovah. And the anointed priest that shall be in his stead from among his sons shall offer it. It is a due forever. It shall be a woolly made to smoke unto Jehovah. And every meal offering of the priest shall be woolly made to smoke. It shall not be eaten. And Jehovah spoke unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto Aharon and to his son, saying, This is the law of the sin offering. In the place where the burnt offering is killed, shall the sin offering be killed before Jehovah. And now we're reading of the katat, which is the sin offering. And as we know, in this offering, if we see, if we found out, and we're honest with ourselves, and we found that we've sinned before Jehovah, we will bring forth a sin offering unto him. It's important to note that whilst the offering is important, we need to first make it right with the person that we sinned against. So if you don't consider that, bringing that offering to Jehovah and to the tabernacle, it will not be acceptable. 
if you've wronged your brother or your sister, you should first find amends with that. Speak to your brother, speak to your sister, make it right. Then once that's done, you are going to bring up the offering to the priest and the Levites. That's the order in which it should be done. Similarly, in our day and time, we should strive our best to make amends with the people that we have wronged. Sometimes we say things in a way that it might not come across the way we intended to say, to come across or to go across to that person. Have an intelligent conversation, an honest conversation with that person and try to make amends, make it right with that person because we as a people, there is no room for us to fight against each other. We should be striving every opportunity that we get to be reunited as a people once again. Everyone else hates us. Why should we hate ourselves as well? So in this law, Yehovah is telling us we should strive to make amends by doing these offerings. We see with the sin offering, it is a bit different to where that sin offering, unlike the meal offering, it is brought up to the Kohen, Aharon, and it's actually given unto him, and he's going to take a part of it and put it on the altar. We know for the animal that's going to be used, the inwards, the kidney, the fat, the lobe of the liver, that's placed on the altar, and the other part will be burned outside of the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. It is most holy. The priest that offered it, offereth it, for sin shall eat it. In a holy place shall it be eaten, in the court of the tent of meeting. Whatsoever shall touch the flesh thereof shall be holy. And when there is sprinkled of the blood thereof upon any garment, thou shalt wash that whereon it was sprinkled in a holy place. But the earthen vessel where it, wherein it is sodden shall be broken. And if it be sodden in a brazen vessel, it shall be scoured and rinsed in water. Every male among the priests may eat thereof. It is most holy. And no sin offering whereof any of the blood is brought into the tent of meeting to make atonement in the holy place shall be eaten. It shall be burnt with fire. Right. And we see here one of the most important things we should remember is that those Levites that's partaking of this meal, they should be clean. So they should bathe before the evening and ensure that they're clean before they can partake in this offering, the sin offering. When we think about this offering here, it really gives us an opportunity to, to make it right with Jehovah. And if you think of the power that we serve being a, the holy power of Israel, the one that is without flaw, as the firstborn of Israel, we should be striving to be holy as well. If you look at the word kwadosh, you will see that it means to set aside. It means to be different. So we should ask ourselves in our doings each and every day of our lives, are we blending in or are we standing out in the things that we do? To be holy, to be sacred, to be consecrated, to be purified, and to be set apart. Separate. We should be different from the other nations. We live in a day and age where being evil is a norm. In the school and system, it's scary. Because these children, our children, are being taught that homosexuality is normal. To be a lesbian is normal. It's going to the extent where, I saw an article this week, the story books are being published and illustrated to push homosexuality in our homes. That's evil. When you go to the library, you cannot just pick up a book anymore and just give it to your child, six-year-old, 10-year-old, the content that is within that book or those books is evil. And they're doing it in a very smart and a subtle way. If we do not open our eyes to it, our children can fall prey. We should be starting to think of ways in which we can create our own schools for our children. Because if we don't do that, we're going to blend in with the evil that's in our midst. Again, to be holy is to be separate, to be set aside. In the way that we dress, we should not blend in. At our workplaces, when you look at your brother and your sister, there's something about you that should stand out from all of your coworkers. Not just physically, but in the way in which you, you deal one with another. Just a few weeks ago in work, I ran into a brother. He came to me and said, Assalamu Alaikum. And that was an opportunity for me to tell him, no, I'm a Hebrew Israelite. And he was in awe because he too is a Hebrew Israelite. And that was just the beginning of the conversation. We were able to talk about the holy season, 
the group that he's with, they're going to be celebrating the day of Pesach uh, one or two days before us. But in the conversation, we strive our best to forget about the differences and focus on the similarities. He has a son that was just born. He named him Le Levi. We spoke about the tribe of Lewi, and we had a beautiful conversation. But if I did not wear my kippah, and him thinking that I'm a Muslim, at least it's close enough, he would not have approached me. And that conversation would not have happened. We exchanged number, I spoke with him. I told him I've been doing this all my life. He's been doing it for seven years and he's still striving to learn. So now this is an opportunity for me to glorify the name of Yehovah by teaching a brother that's looking for the law. But again, if I tried to blend in and did not wear my kippah and strive to look different, that conversation would not have happened. So it's very important for us to understand a part of being holy is specifically being different and being separate from the nations round about us. As we go into the seventh chapter, we continue with the offerings that was commanded to Moshe to be given unto Aharon and his sons. And this is the law of the guilt offering. It is most holy. In the place where they kill the burnt offering, shall they kill the guilt offering, and the blood thereof shall be dashed against the altar round about, and he shall offer it all, the fat thereof, the fat tail, and the fat that covereth the inwards, and the two kidneys, and the fat that is on them, which is by the loins, and the lobe above the liver, which he shall take away by the kidneys. And the priest shall make them smoke upon the altar for an offering made by fire unto Jehovah. It is a guilt offering. Every male among the priests may eat thereof. It shall be eaten in a holy place. It is most holy. And the guilt offering is very similar to the sin offering. Because if you find yourself guilty, you have more likely acknowledge that you sin before Jehovah. So we see here, these are the commandments as it pertains to the guilt offering, also known as the asham. If you've wronged your brother, you've wronged your sister, and you find that you're guilty, you bring forth a guilt offering before Yehovah. In our day and time, we strive our best to, and a lot of the people in the world that's, that does not know this law and is evil, they will try to find every opportunity to get away from doing that which is right before the Creator. This just reminds me of a few years, actually not a few years ago, but probably over 15 years ago in Guyana, there was this brother known in the community, he was known as a thief. Everyone knew that he, he steals from everyone in the community, but no one did anything about it. And one day he came to our home in the middle of the night. And if you know Guyana, there are basically two seasons, sunny and rainy. It's, it's either sun or rain. So what usually happens is, what we did, and a lot of the families did, the May-June period, which is the rainy season, we would gather rainwater. We would drink that rainwater, we would water the plants, my email would use it for cooking and so on and so forth. So in, dash, in addition to having the top water, the purified water, you had a very pure water, which is the rain water. But as the rainy season went past, went by, obviously that barrel or those barrels would become empty. So they, they would just be sitting in the yard. So he saw that as an opportunity to steal the barrel. Mind you, this is a, a green barrel. It's not a regular color, it's a very bright green. And he took the barrel, Everyone knows that he's a thief, so my father, he went around, he found out about it, and he brought the, bro the brother back to the house. Now, I'm not sure if any one of you know my father, but he's a very, very scary man. So he took this brother. We're looking there, my brother and I, Ovadia. My father told us, all the girls, stay upstairs. Obadiah and Shemuel, come downstairs. So he's trying to teach us a lesson. He took the brother tied him up on a tree, his hand behind his back, and his feet on the branch, on one of the branches to the bottom part. Now, at the, at the actual base of the tree, there was an ant's nest. And I'm not talking about those little small ants. I'm talking about the red ants. They will call it the red ants, or cop cop, <laughs> known in the Caribbean. And he allowed him to stand there for, I would say, 30 minutes to an hour. And those ants were killing him. And this is the first time, I'm telling you, I'm probably six, seven years old, my brother and I. We're standing there looking at a, bro a grown man crying. 
The lesson for us was don't steal. <laughs> that was a lesson for us. That's in our mind, and it cannot be removed. That brother, to this day, we've seen him from time to time. It's awkward for us because we were children looking at this brother crying as a grown man, but he learned a lesson too. You cannot wrong someone and think that the universe, Yehovah, will not repay you for that wrong that you've done. Same thing with the offerings. We cannot just come with the offerings, forget about what we did, and think that Yehovah is going to correct us. He's going to allow us to be acceptable before him. It does not work that way. If you look at the judicial system today, if you rob the bank a million dollars, what is your penalty? Well, what's happening with the million dollars? You keep it, right? That makes no sense. In a lot of countries, if you think about it, I'm not giving you any ideas here. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. But if you rob, in certain countries, if you rob a bank, $2 million, I'm just using a number, and you go to the court system, they're not going to ask you to repay that money. They're going to put you in jail for 20 years, 24 years, 25 years. Different countries might have different rules. But at the end of the day, you're not making amends. You're not giving that money back to that bank, to that financial institution. So we're seeing that the punishment does not fit the crime. But in our portion, Yehovah is saying it's going to fit because first, we have to make it right and also give what? A fifth, which is 20%. That's the wisdom of Yehovah. But again, the, the, the judicial system, they're in it for the money. When you pay a fine, who are you paying the fine to? The person or are you paying that to the state? You're paying it to the state. It makes no sense. But Yehovah, in his wisdom, he's saying, hey, when you bring this, you also, if you wrong someone, you have to first make amends, pay the fifth, and then bring the offering before Yehovah. Mm -hmm. As in... in as is the sin offering, so is the guilt offering. There is one law for them. The priest that maketh atonement therewith, he shall have it. And the priest that of that offereth any man's burnt offering, even the priest shall have to himself the skin of the burnt offering, which he hath offered. And every meal offering that is baked in the oven and all that is dressed in the stewing pan and on the griddle shall be the priest that offereth it. And every meal offering mingled with oil or dry shall all the sons of Aharon have, one as well another. Now remember, the Levites were not given an inheritance. We were not given land in the nation of Israel. So Yehovah's built in a system here where the Levites can be sustained as well. So when these offerings are brought, a part of it goes on the altar, but the priest and the Levite, they're able to get the portion that's left back to sustain themselves. They don't have any jobs, right? So this is how they're eating and making clothing for themselves. Because think about it. Think about the amount of bowls that were brought up for burnt offering. That skin, we know in the, in the burnt offering, everything is going to be burnt. But for the other offering, the skin is the Levites. They can make clothing. They can make sandals. They can use that material for their gain. Now, if that was not put in place, the Levites, we would not have any sustenance. See, a hoe in his wisdom, he's allowing that to happen so that the Levites can be taken care of. In addition to that, we see here that the offerings that were brought forth, again, it continuously reminds us that those priests, those Levites, they should ensure that they're clean before they partake of that meal. And if you read this, I know a lot of us are going to be, uh, some of us are going to be uh, not happy with this, but let's ask ourselves, Aharon, could he be, could he have been a vegetarian? No. If you're a Hebrew Israelite, can you be a vegetarian completely? 364 days. What's the one day that you're commanded to eat meat? One time a year. So if, if I'm not trying to target the vegetarians here, I'm just teaching the portion. But we're seeing here that they're commanded to take part in this meal. And again, at this point in time, when you think of it, these animals were reared by us. They're not genetically modified. They're eaten healthy. So we have no worries with the meat that's being prepared here. But I just wanted to bring out the point that there are many different schools of learning that 
teaches that you should not eat meat at all. If you look at the history of Israel, we were commanded to eat meat. Even if you do that one time a year at Pesach, which is coming up, if you want to take a small portion of it, you follow the law. Yehovah is not going to hold you accountable. But we are, requ we are required by Yehovah to eat meat. Some sheep. And this, and this is the law of the sacrifice of peace offerings, which one may offer unto Yehovah. If he offer it for a thanksgiving, then he shall offer with the sacrifice of thanksgiving unleavened cakes mingle, mingled with oil and unleavened wafers spread with oil and cakes mingled with oil of fine flour soaked. With cakes of leavened bread, he shall present his offering with the sacrifice of his peace offerings for thanksgiving. And of it shall present one out of each offering for a gift unto Jehovah. It shall be the priest that dasheth the blood of the peace offerings against the altar, and the flesh of the sacrifice of his peace offerings for thanksgiving shall be eaten on the day of his offering. He shall not leave any of it until the morning. But if the sacrifice of his offering be a vow or a free will offering, it shall be eaten on the day that he offereth his sacrifice, and on the morrow that which remaineth of it may be eaten. But that which remaineth of the flesh of the sacrifice on the third day shall be burnt with fire. Now, this offering is quite different from the others. When we look at the peace offering of the Shalamim, we see that the offerer can partake in this offering, unlike the others. Because we're seeing here that they're commanded, first of all, if it's a Thanksgiving offering, that offering can be eaten, but it must be eaten within a time period allocated by Yehovah within the first and the second day. If it's left until the third day, it has to be burned with fire. If you look at all the other offerings, the burnt offering, the Ola, no one gets it. It goes completely to Yehovah. It's completely consumed. When we get to the sin offering, a part of that goes to the Levites, Aharon and his sons. When we get to the peace offering, we see here that the person that brings forth that offering can also partake in that as well. We know the stipulations remain. They have to be clean. It must be done with respect, and there's a way in which it should be done, and also a time period in which it should be eaten. And why would we bring forward a peace offering, a shalamim? If you think of it, this is one of the offerings that is voluntary. We can bring it up whenever we wish. If there is something happening in our lives where we prayed unto Yehovah for someone to be healed, our loved ones, uh, we had a hard time where... Life was hard on us, and Yehovah brought us out of that situation. We can bring a peace offering unto him, a Thanksgiving offering. If Yehovah blessed us with a newborn, a newborn child, this is a time where we can bring forth a peace offering. If you're blessed with a spouse, a husband or a wife, you can bring forth a peace, a peace offering, a Thanksgiving offering before Yehovah. And this just shows Yehovah that we're thankful for what he's done for us. Again, we're striving to find every opportunity and make use of every opportunity to say Torah to Yehovah. In our day and time, as mentioned before, we can do the same. Let's look to see that brother or sister that we can help. I'm sure each of us has a family member that is not doing that well off. It could be you tomorrow. You can be in that position tomorrow. You would want someone to give that helping hand. So if you have that finance, if you have that support, if you have that service that you can give to someone, by all means, we should put that helping hand out to help our brother and our sister. That's how we should think, because we're, uh, we're a family. We should look out for each other. And by doing so, we ourselves are going to be blessed. If you think about it, and even in our midst, someone had to find it within their hearts to put forth some monies towards buying the new drums. That person is going to be blessed. Yehovah knows the heart. He knows that person's situation and their kindness, their ability to put their hands in their pocket and say, hey, buy a few new drums. The classrooms that we have behind there, someone said to themselves, I'm going to build an entire classroom. I can tell you without a doubt, Yehovah's going to bless those people. He's going to bless us because the more that we give, the more we receive. That's just, how it's, that's just how it's set up. It's the law of attraction. It's the law of reciprocation. If you give, you're going to receive. So we see here 
that Yehovah is setting up a standard to where we can remend and rebuild our relationship that we've broken with him. We just built the, the golden calf. We just sinned against him. And he's showing us that he's merciful and he's going to accept us if we come to him in the right manner. We do not have these offerings, but what I would like to take some time to, to really delve into is ways in which we can be acceptable before Yehovah. We really have to take some time to use prayer towards our benefit. And prayer is one of the things that can be very powerful. Most of you have had someone in the hospital, and there's nothing that you could have done. You couldn't bring an offering to Yehovah. The only thing you could have done, I could have done, was utter a prayer unto Yehovah, a sincere prayer. And we've seen it. I'm sure everyone in this room has seen it where Yehovah answered our prayer. So let's talk about how we can do a better job in praying before Yehovah. Now, I just want to put a disclaimer out there. I'm not saying that we need to follow a script every time we pray. You might be in an un uncompromising position where you just have to pray. You might be in the Beit Shemush and you might have to pray. But if you have the time and you have the effort and you're intentionally praying, there are certain things that we can consider in prayer. So let's look at this slide to consider what are some of the things that we should acknowledge and consider when praying before Yehovah. Next slide, keep going. Uh, I might be down a bit more. Again, right here. Uh, I'm not able to see. Can I have the card? Let's stand sort of. Sort of above. Now, if we look at. These are five keys to prayer. The first one is sincerity. Be sincere when talking to Yehovah and speak from the heart. You cannot fool Yehovah when you're speaking to him. He knows what's in our spirits. He knows if we're praying from the bottom of our hearts. If we strive to come before him with a sincere spirit, he's going to accept our prayers. Concentration. Train yourself to concentrate and try your best to ignore distraction. It's happened to me before. You might be praying, and something pops in your mind, and you're distracted. You have to train yourself to stay focused on what you're praying for. If we go down to the bottom, in addition to that, we can also prepare. Prepare your mind and heart, and ask the Holy Spirit to be present. One of the formulas that was given unto us by our four parents was to ensure that when we're introducing our prayer is to say to the power of Abraham, the power of Yiskak, and the power of Yaakov. We're clear on saying who is the power that we're praying unto because there are other deities out there that we can call upon and we don't want to call upon. So we have to be specific as to who we're praying to to ensure that our prayer is accepted. To the bottom, uh, you have location. Let's be mindful of the location again. You might find yourself in a hospital. You might find yourself in the shumush. You may have to pray. But if you have that opportunity to prepare yourselves, you should ensure that you're well covered. Some of us, we cover our heads. Ensure that you're well clothed. You don't want to be half naked praying before you hold. That's disrespectful. Right? Ensure that the environment that you're in is acceptable and Yehovah is going to answer our prayers. And then the last one, which is very important, the quality of prayer is more important than the quantity and the length of that prayer. Many of us think that we have to say, oh, a long prayer, half an hour. If we're sincere and we're saying this prayer from our hearts, the length of it is not as important as the depth of what you're saying within that prayer, the quality of that prayer. And again, if we do this in sincerity, Yehovah is going to answer our prayers. Yehovah said that, He's going to accept the prayers, the offerings of our lips. Malkiel did a very, very good job today with breaking down the, the half Torah. And he spoke about the importance of not just having that offering, but our actions afterwards. If we do not proceed and we do not follow up the offerings by changing our ways, they will not be acceptable before Yehovah. We have to ensure that like Yom Kippur, if we come on that day of Yom Kippur 
and we tear our hearts out, and we cry before Jehovah. We wear our beautiful white linen garment, and we ask for forgiveness. And the following day, we're doing the same evil. It does not make any sense. So we should ensure that our character is one that reflects what we ask for. We should not be committing the same sins. Y'all willing for Yom Kippur? We should not be asking for forgiveness for the same sins that we asked for forgiveness last year. So again, prayer is important, but what's most important as well too is our actions that precedes the prayers. We have to show Yehovah that we're changing as well. Because if you ask Yehovah for help and you're evil, you're working against yourself. So our actions are very important to ensure that the prayers that we utter before Yehovah is acceptable unto him. Come to. And if any flesh of the sacrifice of his peace offerings be at all eaten on the third day, it shall not be accepted, neither shall it be imputed unto him that offereth it. It shall be an abhorred thing, and the soul that eateth of it shall bear his iniquity. Mm -hmm. And the flesh that toucheth any unclean thing shall not be eaten. It shall be burnt with fire. And as for flesh, every one that is clean may eat thereof. But the soul that eateth of the flesh of the sacrifice of peace offerings that pertain unto Jehovah. That soul shall be cut off from his people. That soul shall be cut off from his people. And when any one shall touch any unclean thing, whether it be uncleanliness of man, or an unclean beast, or any unclean detestable thing, and eat of the flesh of the sacrifice of peace offerings, which pertain unto Jehovah, that soul shall be cut off from his people. Right, and in the coming weeks, we're going to see that two of the sons of Aharon are going to be killed because they're not following, or they did not follow the instructions of Jehovah. The job of the Levite is no, la is no light task. I was speaking with Misharit in the Misra today, and we were just talking about the offerings. And just think about, again, this book is not important to many of us, but the tribe of Lewi, this is a very important book. Because think of you standing in front of that altar, and you have to remember, okay, this is the portion that should go on the altar. The fat, the low of the liver, this portion should be taken out. There is someone that's standing next to that Levite that's reminding him, don't forget this. Do this. You have to put that. Because if they get it wrong, they can lose their lives. It's just one opportunity that you have to get it wrong, and that's it. So I pray that Jehovah bless the Levite. Bless our spirit, because this job that we have here is no light job. And you see the brothers and the sisters, the brothers that stand before you, it's preparation. We have Kohanim in our midst. It's no light task because when you're given that responsibility to be a Kohen in Israel, that promotion does not come from man. You can be promoted at your job as a supervisor or manager. It's good. But when you're given that responsibility and that promotion of a Kohen, don't play with it because you can lose your life. And that's one of the things that Kohen and Mikael tell us all the time. You want to be a Misharet or a More? Don't, this is not something to play with. Be a righteous brother and just keep that title. When you start to put titles in front of your name as a Misharet, a More, you're always watching you. And you could take your life. This is not something to be played with. And the Levites, Moshe is continuously telling them, this is not what I'm saying, this is what Yehovah is saying. And this book, I'm sure, when they were doing the offerings, there was someone there reading. Okay, let's read this offering again. Let's see what we have to do for the peace offering. Let's see what we have to do for the burnt offering. Because they want to ensure that they get every part of it right so that their lives cannot be taken. And again, we're going to see some examples in the coming weeks. I don't want to spoil that portion. But the point that I'm driving here is the details were very important for Moshe, Aharon, and his sons. And they're looking at it closely to ensure that all of those details are considered when they're doing these offerings. Come to. Now starting back up in chapter 7, verse 22 of Leviticus. And Jehovah spoke unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, ye shall, not, ye shall eat no fat of ox or sheep or goat. 
and the fat of that which dieth of itself, and the fat of that which is torn of beast, mm -hmm. may be used for any other service. But ye shall in no wise eat of it. For whosoever eateth the fat of the beast, of which men present an offering made by fire unto Jehovah, even the soul that eateth it shall be cut off from his people. And ye shall eat no manner of blood, whether it be of fowl or of beast, in any of your dwellings. Whosoever it be that eateth any blood, that soul shall be cut off from its people. And all of us, we really have to pray to Yahweh for forgiveness. All of us might be guilty of this. We've all eaten blood in some way or the other, unknowingly to us. When you buy that chicken from those fast food restaurants, they're not reading this law. They don't care about all the blood being drained out. So we're all guilty. So we pray that Yehovah may accept us and forgive us for our wrongdoings. But moving forward, we should strive our best to, if we're going to eat out, ensure that it's well cooked. That when you, when you cut it, you should not be seeing any, any red color there. It should be well cooked. If you can, cook the meat yourself. What my Ima, what she used to do is soak it in salt water. That will pull all of the impurities, all of the blood out of it. Then she would soak it with season overnight, and then she would cook the meat, right? That's old school. I don't know if people still do that. That takes too long to still do that. But when you marinate that meat and you allow that seasoning to go into it overnight, I'm telling you, it tastes good. So I eat meat. I know earlier I was telling you that as a nation of Israel, you're commanded to eat meat. I eat meat. Trust me, that's a law that I'm going to follow. So Yom Kippur is not the only time that I'm, Yom, sorry, not Yom Kippur. Kal Matzo, Pesach, is not the only time I'm eating meat. But again, we have to see here that we have to return unto this law. And the only way that we can do it is if we have our own cattle, we have our own flock, we have our own kitchen garden. I know this is something that seems far off, but a lot of us have beautiful lawns with no plants in the earth, no food in the earth. You can have a kitchen garden, you can have a bucket, we have a bucket with aloe vera. Every time I get a cold, I take a piece and it goes away. Something you can have there, and probably not so much so here in the States. Back in Guyana, there is many different uh, initiatives that's being put forward. There's a seed distribution that's been happening right now. If you go to the Ministry of Agriculture, they're just giving you seeds. They're asking you, they're forcing you to grow in your backyard. Because I'm telling you, there's going to come a time where food is not going to be to the hand reaches as it is right now, and that day is very near. So there's going to be scarcity, and if we cannot grow our own food, we will starve. But in this portion specifically, we're seeing that we're being commanded here not to eat the blood and also not to eat the fat of the offering. And Jehovah spoke unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, He that offereth his sacrifice of peace offerings unto Jehovah shall bring his offering unto Jehovah out of his sacrifice of peace offerings. His own hand shall bring the offerings of Jehovah made by fire. Mm -hmm. The fat with the breast shall he bring, that the breast may be weighed for a wave offering before Jehovah. And the priest shall make the fat smoke upon the altar, but the breast shall be Aharon's and his son's. And the right thigh shall ye give unto the priest for a heave offering out of your sacrifices of peace offerings. He among the sons of Aharon that offereth the blood of the peace offerings and the fat shall have the right thigh for a portion. For the breast of waving and the thigh of heaving have I taken of the children of Israel out of their sacrifices of peace offerings and have given them unto Aharon the priest and unto his sons as a due forever from the children of Israel. Now we see here the wave offering and the heave offering. And it sounds complicated, but it's literally just telling you that that offering is either heave, up and down position, or waved as a peace offering before Yehovah. And we're seeing here that there are specific parts of that animal that should be taken for each of those offerings. We have the right thigh and also the breast for that offering. So these are requirements that goes along with the peace offering because the peace offering can not only be the flower that you bring forth, but there are also animals that are going to be a part of that peace offering as well. Tom Sheep. Leviticus chapter 7, verse 35. This is the consecrated portion of Aharon and the consecrated portions of his sons. 
out of the offerings of Yehoah made by fire, in the day when they were presented to minister unto Yehoah in the priest's office, which Yehoah commanded to be given them of the day of the children of Israel, in the day that they were anointed. It is a due forever throughout their generations. This is the law of the burnt offering, the Ola, of the meal offering, Minka, and of the sin offering, Katat, and of the guilt offering, Asham, and of the consecration offering, and of the peace offerings, which Yehoah commanded Moshe in Mount Sinai, in the day that he commanded the children of Israel to present their offerings unto Yehoah in the wilderness of Sinai. Right, so if you have any questions, anyone asks you anything in pertaining to the offerings, from chapter 1 to chapter 7, you have all of the details there as it pertains to the offerings before Yehovah. And we see here, it's basically summarized everything by telling us of those five offerings that we just spoke of. But I've put together a very simple slide that shows us specifically what the offerings are, who is going to be the one responsible for Put it for that offering, who can partake of the meal, and which part of that meal can be eaten of. So let's just quickly go through that. I think you have to go up. Go up. Okay, right here. So you see here we have the offerings, the first one being the burnt offering. And we see here this offering can be from the bull, the male goat, the sheep, the dove, the pigeon, or the poor. When it comes to what goes to Jehovah, everything is cut to pieces and washed and burnt on the altar. So that's wholly consumed, that goes completely to Yehovah. What does the priest get? Nothing. What is the person that actually gives that offering? What do they get? They get nothing. When we go to the grain offering or the meal offering, this one is a bit different. We see we can bring the grain offering, it's being offered with the oil, the grain, and also the frankincense. A handful of that is taken, just a portion of that flour is taken. The remaining flour, again, that goes to the priests and the Levites. They can bake their bread, their cakes with it. That belongs to the, to the Levites. You see here, most of the flour, whatever is left, after it's prepared, that goes to the Levites. The person that brings forth that offering, they're not required to get anything. When we go down to the peace offering, like I spoke of earlier, this one is a bit different because this is the only offering that the offerer can take part of. So the peace offering can be a male, female goat of the calf, the goats and the sheep, the kidney, parts of the liver, the fat that goes on the altar, that goes to Yehovah. When it comes to the Levite, the breast and the right thigh, we just spoke of that. Everything else, the person that brings forth that offering can partake of that meal. But again, we said it has to happen within the 48 hours. And the third day, it should be burnt. And then we have the sin and the guilt offering that are very similar. We see these are the animals that can be brought for the bull, the male, the goat, female lamb, pigeon, or the dove, for those that are not as fortunate as others. And then what goes on the altar is the kidney, part of the liver, again, the fat, that remain it as it was taken outside of the camp. That goes to Yehovah. Everything else belongs to the priest. And this offering, the sin offering, you're not partaking in it. Because remember, it's a sin offering. You don't want to eat the sin offering. It doesn't make sense. So the peace offering is the only offering that we see there that you can actually partake of as the person that brings forth the offering. So this concludes all of the laws as it pertains to the offerings that's brought to Yehovah by the Levites. We conclude our portion in the 8th chapter. And this chapter speaks of the consecration of the priests. This is a very, very beautiful occasion. We're going to see all of the garments were made, all of the ornaments were made. The children of Israel, we're looking at it. We're waiting for this day to see when the high priest and the priest are consecrated before Yehovah. So let's read this portion and see what are the instructions, what are the guidelines, what is the manner in which this portion should be done before Yehovah. And Yehoah spoke unto Moshe, saying, Take Aharon and his sons with him, and the garments, and the anointing oil, and the bullock of the sin offering, and the two rams, and the basket of unleavened bread, and assemble thou all the congregation at the door of the tent of meeting. And Moshe did as Yehoah commanded him, and the congregation was assembled at the door of the tent. 
And Moshe said unto the congregation, This is the thing which Yehoah commanded to be done. Now, you know, people, we love this. We've been waiting for this day. Trust me, everyone is out of their tent, and they're standing at the, at the gate. I have a visual there. They're standing at the beginning of the front of the altar or the tabernacle. They're standing there looking in awe of this ceremony that's about to take place. And let's think of how merciful Yehovah is. Who is the person that was chosen to be the high priest? The same man that was responsible for building the golden ark. Let's just really think about how merciful Yehovah is. Uh, go down. I think it should be. If it's not there, I probably forgot it. Keep going down. You might, you might see it. <clears throat> but right there, Cain. Okay. This is what it looks like. Everyone was standing at the gate. The Levites are there. Yehovah is going to list the different items that should be placed or should be used for this ceremony. This is going to be a seven-day ceremony. But we can see here that, as I was saying, Yehovah in his mercy, and this is, this is proof that even though we may have our errors or shortcomings, if we come with sincerity before Yehovah, he can remove our sins from before us. The high priest, which is one of the most important positions in the nation of Israel, that title is being given unto Aharon, the same person that was responsible for building the golden calf. That says to us that no sin that we've committed is too much for Yehovah. If we say to ourselves, I'm going to turn from my evil ways, I'm going to be better, I'm not going to return to that sin, Yehovah is going to remove it from us. The same way he removed it from Aharon, he can do it for us. But Yehovah, he knows the past, the present, and the future. He knows if you're going to return to your evil ways. He knows if you're striving every day to be better. Ten small steps is better than one large step. Make those small changes as we begin a new year. We have a new opportunity to come before Yehovah, to serve him on another level. Your service cannot be the same like last year. It means that you're not growing. You're growing physically. You're not growing spiritually. So with this portion here, we're going to see that this is a beautiful, again, this is a beautiful ceremony. We love rituals. We like it. This is, this is what we live for. They've been talking about it all along, and Yehovah, through Moshe, is giving us the rules as to how it should be done. Some sheep. And Moshe said unto the congregation, This is the thing which Yehovah hath commanded to be done. And Moshe brought Aharon and his sons and washed them with water. And he put upon him the tunic and girded him with the girdle and clothed him with the robe, and put the ephod upon him. And he girded him with the skillfully woven band of the ephod. Now, now let's, let's, let's stop for a second and let's hear about, let's try to consider what's happening here. Moses is giving them a bath. Obviously, there are, there are certain parts are covered. This is not, we still have to respect your host. It's done in a very holy manner. But he's giving them a bath. Symbolically, this is one of the symbolisms here that we're seeing here, that they're going to be cleansed of their sins. He's bathing them. These are grown men that's being bathed, that's being given a bath by Moshe. And it's being done in the presence of Israel. They're seeing that that Aharon that you knew yesterday is not the same man tomorrow. The respect that you had for Aharon, it has to change. Because from this day onward, this is your high priest. And a lot of times we have a hard time swallowing that. If you don't like the person, that's on you. But the position that they hold is what you should respect, especially when it's a, a, a position given by Yehovah. If you're given that position as a high priest, you have to respect that person. If they're wrong, that's on them. They're going to bear the blunt of that. They're going to bear the, the, the iniquity of that. But your responsibility, my responsibility, is to ensure that we give that respect. So after they're given the bath, 
the garments that are prepared, that were made, that Cohen Sheikh spoke of, they're being dressed. A grown man, again, they're being dressed by Moshe. They're getting another level of respect for Moshe as well, too, because Moshe is the priest maker. He is the one that has fallen all the laws that was given unto him by Moshe to ensure that this ceremony is one that is done to perfection. And he bound it unto him therewith, and he placed the breastplate upon him, mm -hmm. and in the breastplate he put the urine mm -hmm. and the thumim, and he set the mitre upon his head, and upon the mitre in front did he set the golden plate and the holy crown, as Jehoah commanded Moshe. And Moshe took the anointing oil, and anointed the tabernacle, and all that was therein, and sanctified them. And he sprinkled thereof upon the altar seven times. And just think of Bezalel Beza and Aholiab, and all of the people that were part of the ceremony of sewing the garments. They're just looking, they're in awe. It's like, finally, it's kind of a seamstress, a tailor. When you make a garment for someone, you're waiting to see how it's going to fit to ensure that everything fits perfectly. Everything is to perfection. Yehovah, he's perfect. So everything looks beautiful. You see the high priest, he has the breastplate, the mitre, kwadosh la Yehovah on his, on his forehead. He has everything that was commanded unto him. And now we see that he's going to be anointed with the anointing oil. Mm -hmm. And Moshe took the anointing oil and anointed the tabernacle and all that was therein, and sanctified them. And he sprinkled thereof upon the altar seven times, and anointed the altar and all its vessels, and the laver and its base, to sanctify them. And he poured of the anointing oil upon Aharon's head, and anointed him to sanctify him. And Moshe brought Aharon's sons and clothed them with tunics. Right, so the same oil that's being used to anoint Moshe and his son that same oil is being used to sanctify the ornaments as well, too. Mm -hmm. And girded them with girdles, and bound head tires upon them, as Yehoah commanded Moshe. And the bullock of the sin offering was brought, and Aharon and his sons laid their hands upon the head of the bullock of the sin offering. Symbolically putting their sins upon the bullock. Mm -hmm. And when it was slain, Moshe took the blood, and put it upon the horns of the altar round about with his finger and purified the altar and poured out the remaining blood at the base of the altar and sanctified it to make atonement for it. And he took all the fat that was upon the inwards and the lobe of the liver and the two kidneys and their fat and Moshe made it smoke upon the altar. But the bullock and its skin and its flesh and its dung were burnt with fire without the camp, as Jehoah commanded Moshe. And the ram of the burnt offering was presented, and Aharon and his sons laid their hands upon the head of the ram. And when it was killed, Moshe dashed the blood against the altar round about. And when the ram was cut into pieces, Moshe made the head and the pieces and the suet smoke. And when the inwards and the legs were washed with water, Moshe made the whole ram smoke upon the altar. It was a burnt offering for a sweet savor. Right, and we know as soon as we hear the entire offering being burnt, we know it's a burnt offering. It's Ola. Mm -hmm. It was an offering made by fire unto Jehoah, as Jehoah commanded Moshe. And the other ram was presented, the ram of consecration. And Aharon and his sons laid their hands upon the head of the ram. Right, and this is the Meluim. Mm-hmm. And when it was slain, Moshe took of the blood thereof and put it upon the tip of Aharon's right ear and upon the thumb of his right hand and upon the great toe of his right foot. And Aharon's sons were brought and Moshe put the blood upon the tip of their right ear and upon the thumb of their right hand and, um, and the great toe of their right foot. And Moshe dashed the blood against the altar round about. Right, symbolically, to do the law, to hear the law, and to also ensure that you walk in the law of Jehovah. And this is being done in the presence of everyone. Think of the reason why we have ceremonies. 
one of the reasons why we have ceremony is to ensure that there is no secret. It's being done in the presence of others. If you're getting married, you want everyone to know who your spouse is. <laughs> they don't have any excuse. I didn't know that was your husband or that was your wife. Well, probably not the first example. But that ceremony is for the people to know that this is what's happening. This is not something that we're doing in secret. Everyone knows that this is the high priest, Aharon, and his sons being the priests unto Yehovah. They're seeing this ceremony. So there is a level of commitment from Aharon and his sons because they know that everyone is looking upon them from this day onward as an example before the nation of Israel. They know that they bear a, a very heavy responsibility. They're the ones that's going to be responsible for all of the offerings from this day moving forward. Moshe is going to be there, but Aharon being the high priest, he's in charge, and his sons, he's going to ensure that they do it in a manner that's acceptable before Yehovah as well. And he took the fat and the fat tail and all the fat that was upon the inwards and the lobe of the liver and the two kidneys and their fat and the right thigh and out of the basket of unleavened bread that was before Yehovah, he took one unleavened cake and one cake of oiled bread and one wafer and placed them on the fat and upon the right thigh. And he put the whole upon the hands of Aharon and upon the hands of his sons and waved them for a wave offering before Yehovah. And Moshe took them from off their hands and made them smoke on the altar upon the burnt offering. They were a consecration offering for a sweet savor. It was an offering made by fire unto Yehovah. And Moshe took the breast and waved it for a wave offering before Yehovah. It was Moshe's portion of the ram of consecration, as Yehoah commanded Moshe. And Moshe took of the anointing oil and of, and of the blood which was upon the altar and sprinkled it upon Aharon and upon his garments and upon his sons and upon his son's garments with him and sanctified Aharon and his garments and his sons and his son's garments with him. And Moshe said unto Aharon and to his sons, Boil the flesh at the door of the tent of meeting, and there eat it, and the bread that is in the basket of consecration. As I commanded, saying, Aharon and his sons shall eat it, and that which remaineth of the flesh and of the bread shall ye burn with fire. And ye shall not go out from the door of the tent of meeting seven days, until the days of your consecration be fulfilled, for he shall consecrate you seven days. Right, so this is a seven-day ceremony that's happening here. And we see here that during that time, what we're reading here is a physical part of it. But I'm sure that they're uttering prayers before Yehovah. They're meditating before Yehovah. The Spirit of Yehovah is in that tent, in the tabernacle. Because these men... They're going to realize that their lives are not going to be the same ever again. The responsibility that they're being given is one that's very important. So that seven-day period, their wife or wives are not there, their children are not there. It is just their time to focus on Yehovah, to meditate on Yehovah, to understand and to consider what they have ahead of them. Because, again, this is not something that you can... Wake up tomorrow and say, you know what? I don't want to be a priest anymore. It doesn't work like that. You were ordained to be a priest, a high priest. Aharon's sons, they didn't have that responsibility or that honor to say they don't want that title. When Moshe was on the top of Mount Sinai, Yehovah told him, Aharon and his sons, they're going to be the priest and the high, the high priest and the priest before Yehovah. So this seven-day period, there's a lot that's happening here. Not just the physical that we're reading of, not just the sprinkling of the blood, not just the eating of the bread. There is a lot that's happening behind the scenes spiritually. There's a lot that happens in, behind the scene with us spiritually as well. And I'm hoping that we really take some time to focus on that aspect of our lives. Because the physical is what we are able to see, but the spiritual is what's most important. We serve the Holy Spirit of Israel. We cannot see him. What that says is our spirit is more important than our physical. 
if your spirit is bad, it's going to send forth beams throughout your face. You're not going to be as, an, as attractive because that evil spirit is coming out in the way you look. Remember when Moshe came from, the, from Mount Sinai, what happened to him? His face sent forth beams. Let's try our best to ensure that we really, really put emphasis on our spirit rather than our physical. And that's what was happening here. The priests, the Levites, everyone is seeing this portion. They're seeing the ceremony. And it's a very, very beautiful time in the nation of Israel. We're traveling in the land of Israel. We can see the prize at hand. We're going to the land of Israel. And now we have a Levitical order that we can bring forth our different offerings to, to be acceptable before Yehovah. Again, the offerings is a way in which our foreparents were able to make amends for the wrong that we would have done, to give thanksgiving for the many blessings that Yehovah has bestowed upon us. In our day and time, as I said before, there are ways that we can do so by giving to an orphanage, by being kind one with another, by being respectable to our leaders, to giving a helping hand when we can. And at the end of this portion, I'm going to show you a few of the Kohanim in our midst, just to give them their flowers. Because as a nation, we respect our leaders when they're alive. So in this portion, I really wanted to take that time to give some respect to the Kohanim in our midst. But let's continue the portion as we close out, and then we'll conclude with that. As hath been done this day, so Yehoah hath commanded to do so, to make atonement for you. And at the door of the tent of meeting shall ye abide day and night seven days, and keep the charge of Yehoah, that ye die not. For so I am commanded. And Aharon and his sons did all the things which Yehoah commanded by the hand of Moshe. Hallelujah. Let's just go to the last two slides. And... The men that are here, I have some, some amount of relationship with over the years. As I said, I just wanted to give them their flowers while they're here. Obviously, you know Koi Mikhail. He's not just a father-in-law, but before me taking his, wife, his, his daughter, he's been my priest for all my life. Um, I grew up in a very, very strict household. And it's very hard to listen to your parents. You think they're strict. When you come to Shabbat, you're seeing someone saying the same thing that your parents are saying. So it's kind of a support system. So he did a lot when it comes to being a father, even before he was my father. I have a lot of respect for him. And he's also one of the men that push on through throughout all the adversities. There's a lot of people that came to Guyana. We're not talking about that now, but the point is, he stayed. And Yehovah is truly blessing him. We have Cohen Zadok. The first time he was there, I was probably 15 years old. I think he brought the first set of timbales. It's still there, Ush, if I'm not mistaken. He brought the first set of drums. He was there just a few days ago. He told us how everyone has grown. And as long as I know, he's been a Cohen, a very beautiful brother. I have a beautiful relationship with him and his family as well. Now we have ours truly, Kohen Sheikh Mia. This is a very humble servant for Yehovah. I've never heard of him being a part of any issues. He's very easygoing, respectable. And I know that's as a result of his father. that was a very strict man. So I can see that in him, a master musician. If you heard that song that he did today, just off the bat, trust me, you have to be a musician to do that. That's not... Definitely not something that I could do, you know. So he's very, very dear to my heart, and he's a beautiful brother. Just want to let you know I respect you as a Kohen. <laughs> last but not least, I will leave Kohen Eliel for last because I have a story to tell you about Kohen Eliel. But Kohen Hodiah, when I tell you a servant, a worker, I have to tell I have to tell him a few times, yo, you gotta sleep. I'm serious. Like you're gonna get sick if you don't sleep. He goes to bed at one o'clock, wakes up at four, <laughs> he just gotta stop. <laughs> but it's all in service to Yehovah. He is definitely a servant. These are two men that I grew up seeing as brothers. We're probably just ten years apart. I know it seems like more, but we're probably just ten years apart. 
but I've been hearing him teaching for many years. So Cohen Kodai is a very, very special person to me. We've worked together. We're still working together even though I'm here. I still have responsibilities that I do so. I have much love for that brother. And then we have last but not least, I'm not sure if he's online, but Cohen Eliel is very special because he literally grew up in our household. Of the sons of Cohen Mikael, he's the only one that continuously came to the house. Because let me just tell you a story. Cohen Mikael saw that, I'm not sure if you've met my father, but if you think I'm talented, you have to meet my father. He's a sculptor, he's a painter. He's just good with his hands. So Cohen Mikael said, okay, summertime, the boys go to the house. I don't, Mori Uman is gonna teach you to paint. He's gonna teach you to sculpt. You know, just have, fun, have some fun. The sons came across. I don't think it was all of them, probably a few of them. The first day, Kananiel, he was, he was carving. He had a very sharp gouge. It gouged away his feet. It was bleeding atrociously. The same thing happened with Eliel. Kananiel went home and told his father, I'm not going back. This is too hard. <laughs> he complained. All of the brothers left. Cohen Eliel is the only one that came to the house over and over again. That's how he's so artistic. He, he was taught by my father. But more importantly like that than that, Cohen Eliel, if you haven't, you should have a, 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 a spiritual conversation with him. He's probably the most, one of the most spiritual persons that I've met. A very, very good heart, beautiful brother, beautiful spirit. And again, these are men that were given the title of Kohanim in our midst. So my prayer is that Yehovah be merciful unto them. He accept their efforts. They're striving to be righteous before them as Kohanim in this day and time. It's not easy, as I said before, but I pray that Yehovah may find their efforts acceptable before him. With that, I say hallelujah. 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 Yo, Kai. Yo, Kai. At this time, I utter the words of the blessings, remembering I have not the power to bless, but Yehovah alone. Yivreka Yehovah, we yishmareka. Yair Yehovah panauleka, we kuneka. Isa Yehovah panauleka, we asimleka. Shalom. Hallelujah. 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 Yorkai. 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 Our services will resume at 5 p.m. Hallelujah! 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 All praise be to Yehovah Elohim, the creator and maker of heaven and earth. Bless us all with the gift of life this day. Allowed us all to enjoy our lunch, to enjoy each other's company, enjoy our family and friends and loved ones near and far. My name is Mishare Netanyahu, and it is my divine pleasure to even start off this afternoon portion, even as we sing of Yah's wondrous works. The heavens declare it. The glory is thine, the earth in its beauty shows honor divine, our Yah the creator of everything, to thee we lift up our voice. And we'll sing, sing of the might of Yah, Yah of Abraham. Yes, cause Yah, the Yah of Israel, He may give darkness light. War and calm of thy wondrous word will tell 
And when we do falter, we'll cry unto thee. For lo, when thou hearest, thy mercies will see. Thou sendest thine angel to show us the way. To thee we send out our praises and will pray. Sing of the might of Yah, Yes, cause Yah, the Yah of Israel, He maketh darkness light. words will tell sing of the might of Yah Yah of Abraham yes cause Yah the Yah of Darkness lies, war and calm. Of thy wondrous words, we'll tell. Hallelujah! 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 Barukata Yehovah Eloheinu. Elohe Avotain, Elohe Avraham, Elohe Yitzchak, Elohe Yisrael, Elohe Yeshurun, Shokain the Zion, even the one that dwells in Zion. We are thankful unto thee, Yah Yisrael, for blessing us, granting us the gift of life this day, allowing us, Yah, to arrive to this place to even call upon thy high and holy name. We thank you, Yah Yisrael, for all of your many blessings, for you day by day, Yah, even grant us food, clothing, and shelter. Day by day, Yehoah, you grant us health and strength to even rise up out of our beds and to be able to stand and to praise thy name, Yehoah. We are thankful that you have granted us knowledge, wisdom, and understanding in our midst. We thank you, Yah, for the light that you shine forth from thy Torah, even the culture that you have given us in the blessed season that you have brought us to. We thank you, Yah, Yisrael, for even as you are sprouting the earth anew in this spring season, we ask that you may do even the same to our Rukot, even our spirits. Even, Yah, as we prepare our homes, even as the nations understand spring cleaning, but we are even doing the cleaning as you have commanded, Yah, even for Pesach and for Kagamatzot. May we even clean out our spirits, Yahweh, our minds and our hearts, so that even our keeping, Yah, is acceptable in the highest courts of thy glory. For Yah, Yisrael, you have even taught us, even Yah, through the mouth of our teacher even this morning, Mishra H. Shemuel, that you do not even look at just the outward appearance and the ritual, but you look at the heart, Yehoah. You desire our true dedication within our hearts and our souls to do what is right. May our outward appearance and our inward appearance be one in our service before thee. We ask that you may put your Ruach upon us this remainder of this Shabbat day and allow us, Yah, to even continue to grow in our love and our appreciation for one another and ultimately for you. For there is none that we shall even compare unto thee. There is none that can be equated unto thee. You, Yehovah Elohim, are great. And there is no name that we shall call on besides you alone. Hallelujah. 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 Yachai. 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 Selah. O Shema Yisrael, Yahuwah Elohim. Yahuwah Eloheinu, Eloheinu, Yahuwah Echad. O Baruch Shem Kevot, 
maku tole ola maku tole ola maku tole ola mo baruk shem kevod maku tole ola le ola mae o shema yisrael yahowa eloheinu yahowa eloheinu yahowa eloheinu o shema yisrael yahowa eloheinu eloheinu yahowa eka O Baruch Shem Kevod, Ma'aku Tole Olam, Ma'aku Tole Olam, Ma'aku Tole Olam, O Baruch Shem Kevod, Ma'aku Tole Olam, Le'olam Wa'eh. Hallelujah. At this time, you all may please be seated. Even as we move into our psalm service for this afternoon, where we will have read our traditional psalms, the 79th, the 121st, the 124th, in the 148th Psalm. I will let all those psalmists that have been chosen for today know who they are so that they can be ready. To lead us in Psalm 79 will be Akhayeli. Leading us in Psalm 121, coming from our online, our sister Akot Todaya. Leading us in Psalm 124, here in the building, Bakura Zakai. And leading us on Psalm 148, coming from online, our More Itamar. Hallelujah. So if we can all please welcome Akayeli to lead us in Psalm 79. Hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom Lika. Psalm 79. First, I want to give all honor and glory due to the Most High Creator of all things and everything. Amen. Um, I want to say to y'all for allowing us all to make it here safely and for everybody on uh, online for being here with us today. Uh, let me just read off the screen. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, the heathen have come in time into thine inheritance. They have defiled thy holy temple. They have made Jerusalem into heaps. They have given the dead bodies of thy servants to be food unto the fowls of the heaven, the flesh of thy holy ones unto the beast of the earth. They have shed their blood like water round about Jerusalem with none to bury them. We are become a taunt to our neighbors, a scorn and derision to them that are round about us. For, long, for how long, O oh Yah, wilt thou be angry forever? How long will thy jealousy burn like fire? Pour out thy wrath upon the nations that know thee not, and upon the kingdoms that call not upon thy name. For they have devoured Yaakov and laid waste his habitation. Remember not against us the iniquities of our forefathers. Let thy compassion speedily come to meet us. For we are brought very low. Help us, O Yah, of our salvation, for the sake for the sake of the glory of thy name, and deliver us and forgive our sins for thy name's sake. Wherefore should the nation say, Where is their power? Let the avenging of thy servants' blood that is shed be made known among the nations in our sight. Let the groaning of the prisoner come before thee, according to the greatness of thy power, set free those that are appointed to death. And render unto our neighbors sevenfold into their bosom their reproach wherewith they have reproached thee, O Yah. So we that are thy people, and the flock of thy pasture, will give thee things forever. We will tell of thy praise to all generations. Hallelujah. Uh, like I said, I just want to say to Yah for all things and everything. Um, that's it. Shabbat Shalom. Amen. Shabbat Shalom. Laka. Todor Abad for leading us in that psalm. To lead us in Psalm 121, coming from online, our sister, Akot Todaya. Hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, Lock. It is good to see all of you and a blessing to be able to be a part of this service. Um, hallelujah. Read it straight through. Psalm 121. I will lift up mine eyes into the mountains from whence shall my help come. My help cometh from Yehoah who made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel doth neither slumber nor sleep. Yehoah is thy keeper. Yehoah is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. Yehoah shall keep thee from all evil. He shall keep thy soul. Yehoah shall guard thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and forever. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May this prayer come to, well, it is, it's in fruition for all of us. We just all have to make the efforts to see it and receive all the blessings that Yah has put before us. Um, again, it's always a blessing to be in a part of this service and I pray that you all continue to be blessed and enjoy the rest of your Shabbat day. May the Most High be with us all. Shabbat Shalom. Amen. Shabbat Shalom. Lock. Told our Bob once again for reading that song for us. To lead us in Psalm 124 will be Bakara Zakai. Hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, Lock. I thank the Most High for letting me be here. Amen. If it had not been for Yahuwah, who was for us, let Israel not say. If it had not been Yahuwah who was for us, when men rose up against us, then they had swallowed us up alive when their wrath was kindled against us. Then the waters had overwhelmed us. The stream had gone over our soul. Then the proud waters had gone over our soul. Blessed be Yehoah, who hath not given us as a prey to their teeth. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken, and we are escaped. Our help is in the name of Yehoah, who made heaven and earth. Hallelujah. I just want to give thanks to being here and... I thank you the most high for letting my grandpa, Chief Eleazar, for being there when I needed him. And I think the please, please y'all guide my nana because he's sick. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Toto Rabah for leading us in that psalm and definitely may your words be even heard. From Yah Yisrael. Leading us in Psalm 148, coming from online, Morei Itamar, Yehuda. Shalom, can I be heard? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. First and foremost, all glory to the Most High Yah for allowing me to have life. For this opportunity to praise and glorify his name in the midst of his people. Thank you him for safe travels, the basic staples that he's given each and every one of us, and the many, many luxuries that he's afforded us here in the land of our captivity. We thank him, we honor him on this holy Shabbat day. Psalms chapter 148, it reads on this wise, hallelujah. Praise ye Yehoah from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise ye him, all his angels. Praise ye him, all his hosts. Praise ye him, sun and moon. Praise him, all ye stars of light. Praise him, ye heavens of heavens and ye waters that are above the heavens. Let them praise the name of Yehoah, for he commanded and they were created. He hath also established them forever and ever. He hath made a decree which should not be transgressed. Praise Yahuwah from the earth, ye sea monsters in all deeps, fire and hail, snow and vapor, stormy winds fulfilling his word, mountains and all hills, fruitful trees and all cedars, beasts and all cattle, creeping things and winged fowl, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all judges of the earth, both young men and maidens, old men and children. Let them praise the name of Yahuwah, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above the earth and heaven, and he hath lifted up a horn for his people, a praise for all his holy ones, even for the children of Israel, a people near unto him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I thank the Most High once again for allowing me to have this opportunity to glorify his name. As I always say, you never want to turn down the opportunity to honor his name in the midst of his people or even if you're isolated. 
we always want to take a chance to glorify the name of the Most High God. I thank the Most High for the life of each and every one of you, the entire community. And uh, I love to see how y'all growing. And, you know, it's like every few weeks y'all add a new wrinkle. So I pray the Most High God will continue to allow y'all to have success in what you do. You know, I'll leave y'all with this. Helen Keller said, and I know it's Helen Keller. It's a strange quote, but I always think about this. She said, alone we can do so little, but together we can do so much. And I've watched you grow, and I pray the Most High God will continue to allow y'all to grow and continue to glorify his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Total Rabbi More for leading us in that psalm. And for all of our psalmists, we thank you. May Yah even give you a special blessing. And for those that desire to read a psalm in the future, if you pray to Yah Yisrael and ask that it's even the person who's choosing the psalmist week by week is touched to select you to stand in front of the community and praise his name. If we could all please stand, even as we sing Baruch Hashem, something we cannot do enough, blessing Yah's name. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Just letting the drummers get in position. They got not a lot of new talent up here. Amen. Hallelujah. Baruch Hashem, Shel Yahuwah. Baruch Hashem, Shel Yahuwah. Baruch Hashem, Shel Yahuwah. Baruch Hashem, Baruch Hashem. Shel Yahuwah, blessed be the name of Yahuwah. Blessed be the name of Yahuwah. Blessed be the name of Yahuwah. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of Yahuwah. Who no tain lechim, who mayim gam. Who no tain lechim, who mayim gam. Who no tain lechim, who mayim No him, who my him God. He gives us bread and our water too. Yah gives us bread and our water too. He gives us bread and our water too. He gives us bread, Yahuwah gives us bread, and our water too. Baruch Hashem, Shel Yahuwah. Baruch Hashem, Shel Yahuwah. Baruch Hashem, Shel Yahuwah, Baruch Hashem, Baruch Hashem, Shel Yahuwah. When I wake up in the morning, I got to praise Yah's name. When I wake up in the morning, 
I teach my kids to do the same. Yahweh is great, he's oh so great. I got to praise his name, I just can't wait. Yahweh is king, Yahweh is king of heaven and earth. There is no God like Yahweh our king. There is no God. Like Yehovah, our King. There is no God, no, no, no. Like Yehovah, our King. There is no God, there is no God. Like Yehovah, our King. Baruch Hashem, Shel Yehovah. Baruch Hashem, Shel Yahovah. Baruch Hashem, Shel Yahovah. Baruch Hashem, Baruch Hashem, Shel Yahovah. Nagin. Again, la ya, again, la ya. I woke up this morning with my mind on Yahuwah. I woke up this morning with my mind on Yahuwah. I woke up this morning with my mind on Yahuwah. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Everybody, let's praise Yahuwah. Everybody, let's praise Yahuwah. Everybody, let's praise Yahuwah. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, Israel, let's glorify Yahuwah. Come on, Israel, let's glorify Yahuwah. Come on, Israel, let's glorify Yehovah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I will serve Yah with all my soul. I will serve Yah with all my soul. I will serve Yah with all my soul. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you love Yah, then say hallelujah. If you love Yah, then say hallelujah. If you love Yah, then say hallelujah. 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 I woke up this morning with my mind on Yehovah. I woke up this morning with my mind on Yehovah. I woke up this morning with my mind on Yehovah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Everybody, let's praise Yahuwah. Everybody, let's praise Yahuwah. Everybody, let's praise Yahuwah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, Israel, let's glorify Yehovah. Come on, Israel, let's glorify Yehovah. Come on, Israel, let's glorify Yehovah. Hallelujah, 
Hallelujah, Hallelujah. I will serve Yah with all my soul. I will serve Yah with all my soul. I will serve Yah with all my soul. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. If you love Yah, then say hallelujah. If you love Yah, then say hallelujah. If you love Yah, then say hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Now again. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Ya Kai, Ya Kai, Ya Kai. Amen. At this time, while we are all still standing, if we get all welcome, even the leader of Hashaba Yisrael, Sa'aharon ben Lewi ben Yisrael. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom, family. Watch out for both of them. All praises to the Most High. I thank Him for my life and for the lives of all of you, family online. Shalom, Shalom. Please be seated. I got to get a little hooked up here. My tablet is about to go dead on me. Once again, thanking Yah Yisrael for his mercies, his compassion, and all that he's done for us. Not only this past week, but for our lifetimes. So, how's everybody doing? Excellent, excellent. So, we're going to start off with a question and answer period. Anyone can ask a question, anyone can answer a question. You can only ask it in the event of a controversy that the final decision rests up here with me and the men that's that serve this community and study, not because we know more, but because we want to maintain order on the Holy Shabbat day. So the question and answer period is now open. I encourage the family online. If you have any questions, please put them in the chat and we'll get started, okay? So, um, just a housekeeping note, the brothers are gonna be putting in the chat uh, the information regarding the holy season, if you need dates for the holy season. Also, um, if you need letters for work, for school, it will also be found on two sites, two websites that we uh, are part of. That's Hashabi Yisrael, uh, dot org, And we also are affiliated along with several other communities with the Levitical Calendar Committee. That's the Levitical Calendar Committee, and you can find us at the Levitical Calendar Committee.org. Um, so the question and answer period is now open. Uh, I see a hand. I'll take your hand, Aki. And I'm still not plugged up here, so just give me a second. Okay, Shabbat Shalom. Uh, my question is dealing with um, Moshe and the and the tables of stone. 
Um, after he uh, destroyed the golden calf with the, the first commandments that the Most High created for him, um, I guess in Deuteronomy, when he had to redo the, the commandments, um, was it a literal sense that Moshe had to carve out the two tables of stone, hew, hew, the hewn stones, and create the Ten Commandments again itself? Or do you think that the Creator gave him some more assistance in that? Or was it a literal term that he had to do it itself? Or I just want to get more clarification on that. Toda. Okay, Toda, good question. Uh, brothers, do you all know the answer to that? I'm not sure. Going? Question is, on the second set of tablets that were uh, done with the Ten Commandments on it, did the Most High help to etch it out, or did Moshe have to do it himself? I see a hand right there. I'll take your hand, Mishare Netanyahu. Cain, Shabbat Shalom. Um, just to answer your question, coming from Exodus 34, verse 1, Yehovah said to Moshe, carve two tablets of stone like the first. So I'll just stop there. So the creator was the one who put the 10 words, you know, on them again, but Moshe himself had to actually go and carve out those tablets. Yeah. Appreciate. Probably because he broke the first ones, he made sure you go get the second ones. <laughs> okay. Uh, is my mic up? Back up? Okay, so uh, let's take um, Kasidia. I see your hand, Yadin. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, Raka. Are grasshoppers uh, kosher and how? You mean how? Yeah. The Creator tells us, if they, the both sides tells us they're kosher, they're kosher. And I believe they are kosher. Do you think most Israelites would not uh, eat grasshoppers? Do you think most Israelites would not eat grasshoppers? I think that people will do what they have to do to stay alive. That may not be their choice. Some people will probably might eat them already because they know they're kosher. Some people might not want to eat them, but if they're hungry enough, they'll put them on the fire, cook them up nice and crispy and put a little hot sauce on them and yam it up, okay? We don't know what we would do unless we had to do it. Now, some people might just want to do that because it's a delicacy to some people. But um, if, if you get hungry enough, you'll eat, you'll eat unkosher stuff if you get hungry enough. The dead praise not Yehoah, nay nor any that go down into silence. So. We're going to do what we need to do to stay alive. And then we'll worry about breaking the law afterwards. Cain, okay, Cohen. Then you can, ask for, you can ask for forgiveness. You can't do that if you're dead. Cohen. Shabbat shalom, Lakim. Shabbat shalom, Lakim. I just wanted to give Kasidia the uh, biblical reference. And that's coming from the book of Leviticus, the 11th chapter, uh, and the 20th verse. Uh, so got a 21st verse. It says, Yet these may eat of all wing swarming things that go upon all fours, which have jointed legs above their feet, wherewith to leap upon the earth. Even these of them ye may eat the locusts after its kind, and the bald locust after its kinds, and the cricket after its kind, and the grasshopper after its kind. So they have to have that jointed leg above their feet, uh, wherewith to leap, and that's, you said, how? That's how they become kosher. Well, that's why they become kosher. Okay? Toda. Okay. Um, I see we have a question online. Um, you want to take that one? You want to go to Yadin first? Zahira asks, Shabbat Shalom. I need to... I just need clarification on why we don't eat corn during Kagma Sold. I under not, understand not eating corn out of a can, but why can't we eat fresh ears of corn that we shuck ourselves? How does it differ from any other vegetable, especially considering Joshua 5, 11, where it talks about the children of Israel eating corn during this time? I think that um, it became a tradition in Hashaba years ago. Um, if you know, um, some people say that it rises. In certain cases, it rises. 
so that's what the prop. That's what the controversy was. If you pop it, it rises. Uh, if you cook it like grits, it rises. But it's really just absorbing water. So um, I would say to you that if you were eating corn, fresh corn, I don't think that's unkosher to eat it. But again, a Shabbos tradition was not to eat certain things because of certain reasons. We've done more research, and um, some of our stances have changed in our homes, but we still keep the tradition of the things that we bring into the community, uh, into the camp because of the different controversy. So if it's a controversial thing, uh, Cohen Levy's saying was what? When in doubt, leave it out. And so um, because of that, we leave it out. But I'm, I can't tell you that you can't do that in your own home if that's what you want to do. The same thing with beans. We thought beans would rise, but a lot of beans don't rise. Um, and so, again, um, you know, uh, we may not do it here, but um, I would suggest you do the research. And actually, if you meet, um, we could talk offline. I can give you some information that might help you do your own research and what um, – we still consider to be kosher la Pesach and what we still have questions on. I hope I answered your question. Uh, I want to take Yadin's hand. Um, ask somebody to ask your question, please. Okay? Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. My question is, if there's, if there's no altar, how do we bring up to the Most High? We, we don't. If we don't have an altar, we don't bring anything up before the Creator as an offering, okay, as a sacrifice. We won't bring them up, bring up an offering. We don't. We're not in our land. We don't have altars. We don't have uh, Levites that have been designated by the Creator. We don't know our our uh, genealogy like that. So um, we would not do offerings um, such as sacrifices like that. Uh, you can always offer prayer. You can always uh, uh, give an offering, but you can't do a sacrifice. Okay? I hope I answered your question. Toda. I saw a hand in the back. Okay, uh, we'll take one offline. So, Ima Matana L is the, the one that just came in. She said, Imam Matana El Levi says, aren't certain grains not tov for Pesach, for Passover? Not good for Passover? Corn is, corn is not a grain. Corn grows on a stalk. Um, uh, it's a vegetable. Uh, I would call corn a vegetable, not a grain. Uh, I could be wrong, but I believe corn is more of a vegetable than a grain. Um, so, again... Certain grains may not be kosher for Pesach, but some grains are, obviously, because barley is a grain, okay? And um, we make that as an offering. Um, so certain things, certain grains might be okay. Again, um, you want to you wanna respond to that as well? Yeah, come on up, because I, I just lost my train of thought, so that's fine. Shabbat shalom. So the uh, what's forbidden is chametz, is right. things that ferment. And the reason when we make our matzot, you got to be quick about it, because if you just let, if you let the ingredients of matzot just sit, which is flour and water, especially if it's warm water, it's going to ferment. And it's that was the rise. whole point was we didn't right. have time for all of that to happen. So we remembered that rush to cook the food already and and make sure that it's cooked through and through um as part of the reason why we eat matzot for seven days because they had to be on the move on the run they couldn't just let something steep so that what you might hear that's where some communities might say okay well you can't have rice and all these other things because you have to soak them but you know the the real thing comes into not letting your grains sit a long time as a part of the the cooking process so matzot it's like 15 minutes the matzah is done right you got the griddle hot you make up your your balls and then you roll them flat out on the griddle and it's you flip it both sides it's it's very fast right if you let it sit you are making it hametz and that's what's forbidden right because it will make its own yeast if you just let stuff sit and you go okay i'll keep the dough for tomorrow's haga matzot no it's sitting in your refrigerator fermenting Right, and that's why he's saying you got to make stuff fresh. 
gain total rabbi, I forgot that point. And I also want to remind you, barley is also, uh, I mean, certain grains are used for alcohol, to make alcohol, but they may be edible as long as it's not fermenting and sitting and what have you. So uh, anything can be at some point ferment. If you, grapes are good for Passover, but if you put them in a jar and put them in dark with some sugar, it's going to turn into wine. It's going to ferment. So, uh, you know, there's certain things that we are allowed to eat, but if we don't prepare them properly or we over-prepare them, then they become, uh, um, you know, unkosher for Pesach. Okay? So, um, it's like splitting hairs, and, you know, we try not to get into that because we can have a reason for it and a reason against it, and we're talking about the very same thing. Okay? So I hope that we answered your question, Gavarit. Um, you know, you do certain things with cornmeal, then it, it's going to become, it's going to get into a situation where it's now, uh, you know, it's going to be used for the purpose of rising um, and fermenting. And again, they're two different things, but they all are what we're supposed to stay away from. Um, as he mentioned, the same bread that they were going to have had they let it rise is the same bread that they had to eat during Kagmatsu or Pesach, um, which became a memorial uh, because they were in a hurry and they were in a rush. Okay? So, so there you have it, hopefully. So, um, I saw a hand. Leah, do you still want to raise your hand? Come on up. Um, so my question again is also related to Alam Asot and Pesach, the celebration, because um, we do have folks that are new in the um, building and online and are joining our community. So if you could just give like a quick outline of like what things we definitely need to get rid of. This is something that the sisterhood, we're going to try to make like a little infographic type of thing, but just a general understanding of what things that we'd like to do as a community, as a tradition, and then um, things that we're going to take out because some things um, our Ashkenazi um, community will keep in their house like yogurt and cheese and you see all kinds of Pesach recipes I'm like mm -hmm. you know so just you know explain I was I was planning on doing that for um, for what's going on but I'll do it now because you brought it up okay family so the most important thing that you need to know about Kagmatso, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, is that we try to eat everything fresh. Anything that's processed, anything that has been sitting in a jar or on a shelf or anything of that nature, we stay away from for seven days. So again, so we wouldn't, um, we wouldn't have any, a lot of canned foods and things of that nature, which was mentioned earlier about the corn. We wouldn't uh, have any processed food uh, that's, again, sitting on the shelf. So that's a second reason why we stay away from pasta, things of that nature. Um, we don't eat anything that has alcohol in it, vinegar, all of these things, are leavening agents, fermenting agents. We stay away from all of that. So if you look at, if you want to figure out what to eat, keep a very simple diet. Um, Say, so let's say sometimes you go in the grocery store in the meat section, they'll have chicken that's already been prepared and processed and got the sauce mixed in and all of that other stuff. Oh, just stick it in the oven. We're not going to eat things like that. We're going to stick to fresh meats, fresh fish, fresh vegetables. Um, even things coming in a bottle, we are very, very careful about. We might do something like apple juice or something like that, but we're not going to do soda. We're not going to drink beer, alcohol. Um, I don't know what else to tell you. And when I say stay fresh, as fresh as you can, that's what you do. Try to stay on just the fresh things that you buy in the vegetable section, you buy in the meat section, and, and, and make your three meals, and, and of course your matzahs. If you can buy, make your own matzahs, all you need to make a matzah is, um, is whole wheat flour, water, and a rolling pin. <laughs> that's it. And fire, you just put it on a grill, a griddle, I should say, and you just try to cook it until it gets close to as hard as possible without burning it. Yeah, they have so many minutes. I'm not going to get into all that. Everybody's got these technical terms. I'm just keeping it simple for first timers. And just roll it out as thin as you can, and that way it'll cook faster. The thinner it is, the easier it's going to be to 
to cook and uh, doesn't have time to ferment. We also have a rule in this community. We don't, leave, we don't eat anything that's been cooked over 24 hours ago. That's how you continue to keep it fresh. So if you have something, there used to be a rule, oh, if you cooked it tonight, you got to eat it by morning. No. If you cook it in the evening, you want to eat it before within 24 hours because after that, now it's going to start fermenting. It's going to start spoiling and whatever. The spoiling process takes place immediately if you know anything about cooking, but at least you are you know, doing it within a time frame that you're not wasting food. I also suggest that you don't cook more than you're going to eat in 24 hours so that you don't have to worry about having leftovers and things of that nature. If you cook something in the evening, you have leftover, have it for breakfast, have it for lunch the next day and then cook another meal tomorrow, you know, to that night or something of uh, the sort. So that's what we try to do, try to eat as fresh as possible and try not to leave anything over for more than 24 hours. That's the rule we have here. Some people ignore that. They do what they do, what you do in your own home. Nobody can control it. Our goal is to try to be as close as possible to what the creator wants us to do. It's not about what we want to do. It's about what the most high wants us to do and how much reverence we have for these laws to make sure that we keep them as close as we can. And in certain cases, people have different situations. We understand that. Whatever your situation is, just try to remember the things that we're talking about so that you will be in a position to hopefully get a blessing for what you're doing and not let the most high find it unacceptable. And that's what we all are hoping for is acceptance. If there's any other items, uh, the sisterhood is going to put something out, and um, we'll try to get it onto the website or uh, Hashaba's website so that you all can have more, um, you know, uh, more information if you need it. And also, you can contact us on our uh, website, hashabayisrael.org. Send something. To, well, the email is hashabayisrael at gmail.com, I believe. Hashabayisrael at gmail.com. No. That's the, that's the web, that's for the email address. If you want to email a question, okay, um, you can do that, or, or we could possibly answer it the next time we come up. Okay, Toto Rabah, hope I answered your questions. There's another question. So, online from, uh, I think it's uh, Ezra Duke, who I think is related to uh, Zakwin Yatniel. Okay. Shabbat Shalom. I have a question. Who is Isaiah 9, 6 talking about? I know where they're going with this. Yeah. <laughs> Go uh, ahead. But uh, I can show online so we can see. Yeah. You, you explain it, please. Colin, you coming up? Come on. Come on up, Colin. Come up. Shalom. And I want to say... Uh, Apologize for uh, for last week, Ezra, because he asked his question last week and we missed his question. So this is uh, Zakwin Yatniel's grandson. But uh, it says, for a child is born unto us, a son is given unto us, and the government mm -hmm. is upon his shoulder. And his name is called Pele Yoel's El Gibor Abiyasara Shalom, that the government may be increased in, in peace. Uh, there be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it through justice and through righteousness from henceforth even forever the zeal of Yehovah of hosts doth perform this basically young Ezra this is speaking of uh, a man named Hezekiah who was at the time he was not king but he was a crown prince he was going to be the king and in his kingdom in his administration all of the things that we just read about righteousness and everything like that because he was righteous in his day and time Hezekiah and so this, these things would be upon him when he became king over uh, Yehuda. And this is speaking again of King Hezekiah, who was not the king at the time, but he was going to be king. He was considered a crown prince. Okay? So that's the answer to that. Okay. Hopefully Cohen answered your question, Ezra. Yes, yeah, sure. Come on. Okay, uh, Cohen, great explanation. I just wanted to add as well that um, in the Hebrew of that verse, when it's speaking about unto us a child has been given, a child has been born, that when you look at those key words in the Hebrew of that verse, it's in the past tense, which is very telling for our Christian brothers around. and sisters who will try to say that this is speaking about a future birth, but the actual Hebrew verbs 
are speaking about a birth that's already taken place, a child that's already there at that time in history. So I just want to make that clear as well. Great point. Toda Raba. Okay, do we have any other questions in the room? Luke. Okay. Zach, Zach Queen, come on up. This you, Abba, Abba, Abba Baruch, you Zach Queen, you're the elder. You're the eldest in here. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, Laka. Um, just to clarify something, what did they mean? What was the reason for putting the blood on the ear, earlobe and on the thumb and on the toe? Very good question. Mishare, I'll let you have the honor of answering it since you did such a wonderful job uh, doing the portion this morning. Okay, that's a very good question, Zakwin. So the right thumb, they would do the law. Right. The right big toe, they would walk in the law. Right. And they would hear the law with the right ear. Being a leader in the nation of Israel, the Levitical order, he's responsible to ensure that he walk, do, and also handle the law of Jehovah. So that was basically the main purpose of those, um, that activity within the consecration of the high priest. Okay, end of what? Total Rabbah, hope you answered your question, Zakwain. Great. Any more questions in the audience online? And uh, Toda for the answer. Amen. Oh, who remembers? Okay, family. Go ahead. Ahot uh, Todaya, is there, there is someone wanting to give Zakwain a list of such scriptures that are supposed to be parallel to the New Testament. Can we do a segment based on that when he gets it? Oh, Chizuk Emunah. Do you have the answer to the question or you guys are going to put it in the chat? There's a there's a link to a classic uh, Hebrew book um, written by a biblical Israelite scholar, um, uh, Yitzhak ben Avraham, in uh, the 1500s, but it's been translated as Faith Strengthened. I'm going to drop in a link in Hebrew, Chizuk Emunah. It's 150 chapters long, 100 chapters about how one chapter for every time they try to quote something out of the Tanakh, that is supposed to prove Christianity, and he tears it apart. And in 50 chapters about the New Testament, and goes from Matthew to Revelation, explaining this cannot be a new covenant because this contradicts the covenant of Sinai. So it's about every passage you could come up with, um, and it's online for free as well as on Amazon. I'll put a link. Okay. Toda Rabat Todaya, and that's a great point. And uh, if we can get that to everyone that's interested. That would be great. Okay. So just check your chat, family. Let me get that up. Okay. So are we done? With that question and answer period. Chia says, as per Ezra's question, what scriptures prove that? Crown Prince Hezekiah was the one that was spoken of in Isaiah 9-6. Okay, we'll look at that and uh, come back to it, okay? Cohen's going to look into it. Um, okay, so we're going to move on. Told out to everyone for your questions. Let me try to get this thing to come up. Okay. So, what's going on? There's a lot going on, family. I don't have a lot of stuff here, but it's a lot going on. Okay. So first, I want to cover the tragedies that have been going on in, in America these last just several days with these tornadoes. These tornadoes are wiping out whole communities and um, 
killing a lot of people. Um, the other day, it started out in, um, in, Roll in Rolling Fork, uh, Mississippi. Uh, 22 people were, die uh, were killed. Then it moved into Alabama and Georgia. Um, and then Little Rock had a serious uh, bout with tornadoes in the last 24, 48 hours. A lot of people have uh, died. And I just want us all to remember to give thanks uh, for the mercies of the Most High because this could be one of, any one of us. And if you look at the people, if you look at the people on TV and see the devastation that they've suffered, it's really, really sad. And again, I encourage you to just let your children see the things that are going on in the news. You can't shelter them from it because it could be them. It could be any one of us, and we these have to know that we are thankful and grateful to the Creator that we are not the victims of such a tragedy. And it can happen to anybody. Obviously, the Creator, all of these uh, phenomena, weather conditions, earthquakes, you name it, are in his hands. And um, some of us could be very well be in the wrong place at the wrong time or live somewhere where, uh, you know, you're going to be victim. I, I was having a conversation with my Isha yesterday. I'm like, uh, that only has to happen to me once. I'm not rebuilding in a place. It can happen anywhere. But I just, if I see that this is, there's a place called Tornado Alley in America, and there's certain states that are just prone for these types of things. Uh, I'm going to try to live someplace where I'm not susceptible, and it can happen anywhere. Your house could blow up. You could live in the most safest place, but again, um, you know, it's just certain places, I think, are more prone to these types of uh, things, and um, may I bless them. Those who want to stick it out may continue to protect them, keep them safe, so that they can live happy peaceful and prosperous lives. So just let's all remember to pray for them. It doesn't matter the color that they are, or what their religion is. It's just this humanity that we're talking about. We, we care about humanity. And we just want to make sure that uh, we're all a part of the human family. And nobody uh, wants to see anybody in their right mind. Nobody wants to see anybody suffer uh, like that. Now, the Creator has his way of giving us punishments. He has his way of, uh, you know, of uh, letting us know he's unhappy with us. Uh, but we're not the judge. We don't know why the creator is doing the things he's doing. So we have to just be thankful it's not us and be careful because when you think like that, then if it happens to you, what are you going to say? Oh, I did something wrong. You don't know what it is. Let's not get caught up in that. Let's just think about the human family continue to pray for the human family uh, because we are all a part of that family, okay? So hopefully uh, that'll keep us on the right path. Okay, so now, <laughs> all right, so Donald Trump has been indicted finally uh, in New York um, for uh, this touchy subject because certain things you just can't say up here, but uh, Let's just say he was paying he he was paying somebody off to keep he was paying the hush money to keep somebody quiet that he had nothing to do with it but he was willing to pay $130,000 through his attorney who went to jail for it Michael Cohen and now they finally caught up with him because he broke certain rules now certain laws he's got 30 some odd counts against him they haven't they haven't unsealed the counts yet but um, a lot of people, of course, politics is involved, so people think they're doing it for political reasons to keep him out of office. I don't think that's a bad thing. You know, I surely certainly don't want him standing. I see enough of him now, but if he was president, forget it. So, um, but he broke the law. I mean, I got to watch what I say, but, you know, nobody's above the law, okay? I got to leave it at that. When we didn't have cameras here, I'd say whatever I want, but, you know, yeah, we have to cut the cameras off to say what I'm thinking, um, you know, because, you know, Big Brother is always listening. We go on YouTube, they watch us. If they ain't watching us live, they don't have the link, they watching us, okay? So, um, yeah, my phone is sending them messages right now, I don't know, but we know what we're dealing with. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Okay, 
All right, so we'll see what happens. He's got two other case investigations against him. Uh, the one most notable is the one in Georgia where he needed 11,700 and something votes uh, that they were supposed to find for him so that he could win the state of Georgia when he uh, ran for president in 2020. Of course, he's still stewing about that. He still thinks he's supposed to be president. We're already in the second half of the term of Biden's term, and he's still trying to get into the White House so he can run things again. Okay, so we'll leave it at that for now. I got to be careful. Uh, <laughs> I got a family to think about. All right, so um, you heard about this. You know, these things just happened a few days ago, but it seemed like forever, a long time ago. Twenty-eight year old transgender. I thought it was a. I thought it was a guy trying to be a girl, but it was actually a girl trying to be a guy. Okay, and she went in to a school, killed three kids and three adults, and they still don't know why. And those cops went in there and blew her to smithereens. Ever heard that word before? She shot her way, y'all saw that on video? She shot, and, and I bet you one thing, you can lock a door, but if it's glass, I mean, you're defeating the purpose. That's a wake up call to a lot of security people that have to deal with these issues. I think glass doors are going to become obsolete, a thing of the past, because there's no protection. A lock that you could just break a glass on, that's, I'm, I'm sure they're not going to put another one of those up there. I've seen the glass doors with the wires in between. That might be safe, you know, but I, I doubt if glass doors, any schools, uh, churches, religious places, things of that nature, everybody's going to switch up because uh, that's a scary thing. Kane, Cohen, come on up. Let's get the mic back here. Well, we don't need it, but you want to use the, use, the, use the portable. Kane, speak up. Shabbat Shalom. I was going to say also that uh, private schools and uh, Catholic schools, they're going to start thinking about hiring SROs now. Right. Because they didn't have a, a, a SRO right. on duty. For well, whatever they have reason. to pay them because the yeah. city will pay for a city school. Right, but. exactly. So now that's going to make private schools, Catholic schools think about having mm -hmm. a, a student, uh, you know, school resource officer on I hand. Think, I think charter schools may have to do the same thing, anything that's nonprofit. And they're going to have to be armed. They're going to be useless if they're not armed. Um, I mean, there's more solutions to the problem, but obviously the politicians don't want to deal with that. Um, but again, can you imagine? That's why I say pray for the human family, because that could happen to any one of these kids' schools. Anyone. And it doesn't have to be your kid. If it happens in your kid's school, that's tra traumatic enough. You know, we. You know, if nothing brings you people together, tragedy will do it. And I just pray that the Most High will be merciful. When these things happen, I think about Huff High School. I think about all these schools that these children go to. God forbid, you know. Um, and now I know you can, it's not easy to get into these schools. They're pretty much all locked. And you have to, you know, but all you have to do is buzz and they look at you and they let you in. You know, um, I could be hiding a weapon behind my back. They won't know. They really need to. I don't know what they're going to do, but these are perilous times. And just, again, get on your knees and pray, family, because you, we never know. And we do not want this to happen to our children or anybody that we know. So just pray the Most High helps us through this because it's, it's just crazy. It's a crazy world. It's a crazy world. And it gets crazier every year, every day. Okay, here's another item that um, happened about a week ago. Again, it seems like it's old news now. But um, this Colorado, you know, this is the second one. The other one was a different professional. This Colorado, Colorado dentist is charged with poisoning his wife and killing her. I mean, six kids. They got six kids, and he's putting a poison uh, arsenic in her in her in her shakes, her protein shakes, and um, and then they so stupid. Why would you look up online 
on your job. He didn't do it on his computer. He did it on his office computer. How do you, how do you kill somebody with poison without getting caught? I mean, this is a dentist. He's a doctor. All right, you think he have enough intelligence to know that if you, if you, you can't, listen, you better ask somebody on the street. But you, you go on the internet, they're going to find it. They, they have ways of finding this stuff. You can go ahead and delete all you want to delete. They go inside the belly of the computer and find all that stuff because it's stored somewhere. Okay? They're going to find it somewhere. Well, this fool, he, he poisoned her. And, and, and this was the second time he poisoned her. So when she, she wrote him a text and said, I feel like I'm drugged. She said, he said, um, well, I know what you might be thinking, but I did not drug you. <laughs> from our history, something like that, you know, from our history, you might, what you might be thinking, but I did not drug you. She was dead within hours. Six kids she left behind. And then he come and caught his eyes all red. Well, you crying because you got caught? Yeah, well, guess what? And then this guy did it a couple of days ago. Another guy did it a couple of days ago, uh, poisoned his wife. And, and right away they found him because you can't, this is the thing. Hold on, I need a. <laughs> uh, he wasn't quite as dark as me, okay? Okay, so um, what was I going to say? Man. Yeah, you know, criminals, criminals, if you get caught, if you get caught more than once or twice, you're not a good criminal. If you never got, if you never did anything criminal, a criminal activity, you got to remember, that's all the cops do is deal with criminals. So everything that you don't think of, they already have it on their list to check. They got a checklist. So why waste your time trying to outthink them? That's what they do all day long. And some of them have been doing it for 30, 40 years. And you think you're going to outsmart them? But how dumb can you get to put something on your computer and then he ordered the arsenic on his, at his office because he's a dentist. So he had it delivered through Amazon. No, I ain't making this up. And then within days, the lady was dead. With uh, He got it Tuesday, and by Thursday, she was dead. What's his defense? I mean, it's bad enough. Listen. You know, there used to be a song. It's cheaper to keep her. You know, and if you don't want to keep her, just get, just divorce her. Their problem is they want to hold on to as much money, power, and, 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 and custody as they can. So they do these dumb things, and then the kids end up with no parent. Instead of two separated parents, they end up with no parent. I don't understand. Some of us ain't that dumb. But the smart ones who think they're smarter than everybody else, they're the ones that's doing the stuff. I mean, how dumb can you get? Um, I'm almost done. The two people that came. Oh yeah. So that's a part. I'm gonna do the, No, that's a part of my. That's a part of my portion that I'm doing. Oh yeah, yeah. Where's that? So I, I asked them to remind me of stuff that I forget because I don't write everything down, family. So this guy, he did 34 years in jail for a crime he didn't commit. They just let him out recently. He had a 400-year sentence. And they let him out after. And I just, again, you know, that's a long time to wait to get justice. 34 years. Now, and you know, I give credit to anybody who does not give up. Give up hope. Because that's a tough thing to do to be in jail 
and you're in jail with hardcore criminals. You commit rape and murder. You're not. I don't. They don't care if you don't. If you don't think you're innocent, and this is the sad part. A lot of times, prosecutors bury evidence because they want to get rid of a case, and they bury evidence that will exonerate a, a, a defendant and let them go to jail. And then in a lot of cases, even when they get the proper information to, to prove the innocence, they still, because they don't want to admit that they did something wrong, they'll continue to fight it and keep the person in jail. This is the type of justice system that we have in this country. And you really got to pray to the most high that you don't get caught up in it. Because once they get their, 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 their eyes on you, they don't stop until they get you. So, and you know, a lot of these guys walk out and I guess it's the best thing to do. You can't walk around with hate because if you walk around with hate, you're just going to ruin the rest of your life, you know, with the, yeah, it'll eat you up. And they just, a lot of times they're very forgiving. They forgive, uh, you know, the people that did them wrong. And then sometimes they throw them, okay, I'll give you, a, uh, you know, $10,000 for every year you suffered. Okay, so you walk away $340,000 and no life hardly left, you know. You know, it's, it's a shame. In other countries, some other countries are worse. Some other countries are worse. They just caught a they just caught a couple down in Mexico. Um, I saw this just yesterday. They caught a couple of a guy and his girlfriend. They were from the state of Washington, and um, they caught him in Mexico. They went running because um, they were actually sexually abusing a couple of the kids, a couple of girls. They were like six and four. And the seven-year-old, they killed a boy. They killed the boy. And, and when they thought they were going to get charged, they ran down to Mexico. And they just found, this is the type of people that's walking around the planet, killing their own kids and abusing their own children. Again, give thanks. Give thanks. I'm just telling you all things that's going on in the world. And, and just to remind us, just to be... Be thankful and to, uh, you know, just stay on the right path because I don't know what would make a person's brain do something like that. So, Kane, come on up. Yes, tell me. Which? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You had an item with regard to the nations uh, coming together, right? Some countries. Kane, uh, Shabbat Shalom. Okay. So, um, just one of the another current event that's going on. For those that might not be familiar, uh, there's a international organization of different countries called BRICS. Uh, that stands for Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa. They are essentially kind of like an economic power block to go toe to toe with NATO, you know, the Western nations. And recently, China was able to broker a peace deal between Saudi Arabia and Iran. Now we know Saudi Arabia Sunni Islam, yep. Iran, Shiite Islam, and now China being like the big brother, what the U.S. typically does, trying to be the global police. Now China is kind of upping their value in the world stage by you know, helping broker this peace deal between these two warring nations. Now they're talking about joining BRICS as well. And also there's been conversation about, as we know, Saudi Arabia is primarily controlling the oil, petrol dollar, there's been communication that they could consider switching that to the UN, the Chinese currency. That would be big problems for here. So I'm just saying this for everybody to be aware of, that there are a lot of big power moves going on that, of course, this country is not gonna tell you about a power move that China is making, right? That other nations are making. So just letting you all know current event, Look up bricks and some of the things going on with that. What is the second half? The first half. Okay, Tora. How can you use this? Tora. Okay. Oh, doesn't have everything I need. All right, we'll figure it out. Okay, family. Uh, I'm not taking any more questions. What is it? Okay, I'll take the current events. No questions, please. Please be brief. Hello? Okay. Well, um, some, the update that I received, um, I don't know if it's new or old, but um, 
this is for those who are around my age who was really into the story, but the guy that killed Nipsey Hussle, I don't right. know if you remember him, yeah. uh, he just got convicted 60 years in jail. Um, okay. They had other people, uh, advocates, uh, speaking up after he got sentenced, and they were very upset. Like, the guy, he said, the guy never looked at the jury, never looked at the family, you know. He just basically took his 60 years, like, all right, when's lunch? You know what I mean? So just want to let you know that uh, he was convicted finally after all, right. all this time. So the hallelujah. And that's okay. He got 60 years to think about it. Hold on. Family, how's everybody doing? All right, so we're going to let the brother come up. And uh, Michelle Day, you want to come up and do a song for us? Give this all a break? Nah. I'll let you come up and do it. And then we're going to get into some history and what have you. You're going to do acapella? Oh, boy. I appreciate my glasses not being. <laughs> all right, this needs to stay plugged in. I'm going to leave it up here, all right? Yeah, yeah, just leave it up. Yeah, don't, don't trip over the wire. I got you. I mean, so I see Sar needed some uh, comedic relief, so he called me up here to do a song. <laughs> and I think I just found the prayer list, Cohen. Yeah. You know, it gets lost in the pages sometimes. Yes, literally. Let's sing uh, Cause Israel to Stand. Hallelujah. Here are we, all because of thy goodness. For our souls we commit to thy hand. Help us, please, for thou promised our fathers. Thou would once more cause Israel to stand. Thou would help us to stand in thy glorious name. Thou would help us to stand and erase all our shame. Send thy mercy and life forth throughout all the land. By the power of thy promise, Yah, cause Israel to stand. We had thought that our Yah had forgotten. As we prayed in the enemy's land, but he sent forth the angel of courage so he gave us the spirit to stand thou would help us to stand in thy glorious name thou would help us to stand and erase all our shame Send thy mercy and light forth throughout all the land by the power of thy promise, Yah, cause Israel to stand. We had thought that our Yah had forgotten. As we prayed in the enemy's land, but he sent forth the angel of courage, so he gave us the spirit to stand. 
Thou would help us to stand in thy glorious name. Thou would help us to stand and erase all our shame. Send thy mercy and light forth throughout all the land by the power of thy promise, Yah. Cause Israel to stand. Hallelujah. Even as we welcome the SAR back up once again. Hallelujah. Somebody turned on the heat. I asked for AC and I got heat. <laughs> Shalom, family. I'm back. Okay, so let's get down with it. Okay, so I got a couple items they want me to go back over, family. Uh, Donald Trump issue. Um, they wanted a little more explanation on uh, what's, what's going on with his case. So the case in New York went before a grand jury. That's when they convened several jurors out of the jury pool. It's usually an odd number, like 21, 23 people. And they looked, listened to evidence that they had against Donald Trump. So um, they then vote on whether they should indict him. Indicting him just means they're gonna uh, charge him. Um, and then um, now that he's been indicted, they'll unseal the di indictment on this coming Shalishi Tuesday. And when they unseal the indictment, the indictment They'll tell you what everything is that they're charging him with. At that time, they will uh, arraign him, give him, tell him what his charges are, and then um, usually sometimes they set bail or what have you. They're not going to do that with him. They're just going to fingerprint him, maybe take a mug shot and send him on his way, and then his case starts. Now he's got to get a lawyer, and he's got well, he's got dozens of lawyers because he's got dozens of cases, but. Um, and so I just wanted to explain the process because somebody thought maybe some people didn't know how that went. Uh, it happens every day. It's just this is the first time in history that a former or current president has been indicted on a felony charge. So this is history in, in itself, even if he gets off. But he's the first that did a lot of things that never been done before. So I, he may not care, uh, but his poor grandchildren and great grandchildren are going to suffer uh, because of the legacy that he's going to leave just like Richard Nixon and he was to Richard Nixon was a choir boy compared to this other guy here um, so you know that's what he doesn't see you know power um, the thirst for power is a terrible thing because people will do any and everything in order to to get it Kane Cohen And Shabbat Shalom, Ot Pa'am. Just as you mentioned earlier about us being uh, humanitarians, uh, you know, I thought about it, and uh, you know, I've been praying for the uh, the district attorney, uh, Alvin Bragg. I've been praying for him and his family and his yeah. staff and those yeah. that are trying to bring justice to the forefront. Um, you know, our prayer should not just stop here in the building for family members, but also people that are doing things that we don't have sometimes the courage to do you understand so again we just have to think about that praying for alvin bragg yeah. and his family because he's he has been getting death threats yeah he has a serious uh security detail now they have they're watching him they you never see him walking alone they, he's surrounded which they have to do because of the threats that are out there and and it it'll come from a, a fringe person that loves trump he doesn't have to put him up to it, but he has in certain ways in some of the comments he's making, the things he's suggesting that they do, uh, you know, is leading is leading to people trying to, and they want to be heroes. So there's no telling what they'll do. Come on up, Abba. Abba Baruch, you, uh, let's get the mic, yeah, just get the regular mic. Everybody, Shabbat Shalom. Will this stop Donald Trump from running? 
No, he can That's actually get thought. convicted yeah. and he could still run. Yeah. Um, there's only three, I think, criteria that um, that a person has to have to run for president. One is that he's at least 35 years old. Okay. Um, one is that he's been and lived in the country for at least 14 years. Okay. And the third one, I can't remember what the third one is. All right. Um, you can look it up, Google what is the criteria to be okay, president. Okay. Somebody can tell us, sure. I can tell you the third. But it doesn't stop him. And there was a discussion on it yesterday, just yesterday, that he can actually get convicted because it doesn't say that if you're a convicted felon. It, then there's certain offices you can't run for in the United States, state offices, or maybe even um, federal offices like Congress and what have you, or judge or something like that. Okay. But uh, for the presidency, that's not a criteria. Wow. That he not be convicted of a crime. Now, if the mm -hmm. country is crazy enough to vote him into office after all of the stuff they know he's done, you need to have a passport. Turn over, Bob. Because the corruption is going to eventually affect you. What? Well, you going to say something? Um, just for comedic relief, we did have a king called David who did commit some crimes. True. And he was still favored by the creator. He was, it was favored by the people, too. And I'm not saying that as a pro-Trump or anything. I'm just saying it just to make a point. I don't know if I like the analogy. <laughs> That's just my opinion. King Dawid was no Donald Trump. And Donald Trump is no King Dawid. Okay, so, all right, I don't know what I'm going to do with you. <laughs> uh, okay, so the other item that I left off, and I apologize, dealing with um, what's going on in Israel. Benjamin Netanyahu, who's the prime minister of Israel, has tried to pull a fast one on the country. He's He's been indicted for crimes that they say he committed corruption and racketeering or whatever he, they got him on, getting money or what have you. So I don't know how they put him back in office again, but when he was out, they were wanting him back because he's very, very conservative. And they want a conservative government in there. So anyway, uh, recently he went and on his own changed the laws of how, because they have a three-pronged uh, uh, system like America, judicial, um, judicial, executive, and legislator, legislature. So what he did was he went and in his executive position, went and tried to weaken the uh, powers of the Supreme Court so that they ha he has more power to like really erase their decisions. So if they ruled against him, he can go back and, and dissolve that and just throw out a case. And the people went wild. If you haven't seen it, they were protesting up in Tel Aviv. They were burning stuff. They, they, they were protesting so hard that he fell back and said, no, 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 we're not going to do it now. So they're like, okay, whenever you're ready to do it, we'll be back out here. So they're just waiting for him because he's trying to do it because it's, it's for his own benefit, trust me, because of his case. And I don't know why that case is taking so long, but these cases, the wheels of justice turn very, very slowly. But uh, Netanyahu is a piece of work. And um, I don't know, yeah, I don't know why you took that as your namesake, but anyway, yeah. But again, but if you want to talk about King Dawid, this is what we can expect from you. <laughs> so we'll see what happens with that. Keep your eye on Israel. Okay, family, so we're going to get into the Tanakh. Let's do some... Um, what do you all want to do first, history or Ecclesiastes? Yeah. We'll do that first and we'll end out with the history because uh, I love this history. Um, okay, so we're going to get to chapter, I believe it's chapter 8. Yeah, I believe it's chapter 8. I think we did chapter 7 last time I was up. Okay. Are you ready, reader? Yes. 
Yes. Okay. All right. So we're in chapter eight of Ecclesiastes Family Online. Please, uh, you know, indulge me and kind of pay attention. And let's see what we can find out from this wise man whose father was King David. <laughs> Who is as the wise man? And who knoweth the interpretation of a thing? A man's wisdom maketh his face shine, and the boldness of his face is changed. I keep I counsel thee. Keep the king's command, and that in regard of the oath of Yah. Be not hasty to go out of his presence. Stand not in an evil thing. For he doeth whatsoever pleaseth him. Okay, let's stop there. So who is as wise as who is as the wise man? I think he's talking about himself, honestly, but he could be talking about any wise man. He's also talking about the king, who is supposed to be a wise man. And he talks about how important uh, that person is in that stead. It, it, when, he, when I read this, it reminded me of Moshe when he came down from the mount and he glowed. Um, so we're putting them, these wise men in high esteem. And he says about the king, because sometimes, you know, in his wisdom, the king, uh, and in the power that he has, um, you know, we have to respect him and know that uh, he has taken the oath of the Most High to do the right thing. So they say, be not hasty to go out of his presence because you can learn from him and you can also stay in his good graces and hopefully, uh, you know, gain a blessing from it. So go ahead. For as much as the king's word has power. For as much as the king's word hath power. And who may say unto him, what doest thou? So who can tell, ask the king what he's doing with all the power that he has? But again, it doesn't necessarily have to be a king. It could be anyone with an authority that rules the nation. Um, so in other words, we don't have a king. We got a lot of people that say they're the king. Uh, or the Messiah, or whatever they may call themselves. But we know that the Creator, from our understanding and what we've seen, nobody can stand in that stead right now. However, we have people who have earned the right to gain that type of respect and have the right to gain that type of uh, authority over the people in order to lead them in the, pro in the right direction. So let's go on. Whoso keepeth the commandment shall know no evil thing. And a wise man's heart discerneth time and judgment. For to every matter there is a time and judgment. For the evil man is great upon him. For he knoweth not that which shall be. The evil of man, the evil of man is great upon him. Okay. For the evil of man is great upon him. For he knoweth not that which shall be. For even when it cometh to pass, who shall declare it unto him? There is no man that hath power over the wind to retain the wind. Neither hath he power over the day of death, and there is no discharge in war. Neither shall wickedness deliver him that is given to it. Okay, so Solomon, um, what I would say about all these things he's written is Solomon has uh, kind of sorted things out for us, for those who don't understand uh, the nature of life and the nature of structure, the nature of a society, the nature of nationhood. And he's just trying to put everything into perspective. And he reminds us that every matter there is a time and a judgment. So whatever it is that we're doing, whether it's the king or it's the common man, um, we have to understand that there's, uh, there is, there is, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, you know, judgment day. Okay, we all have to deal with the consequences of our actions, and we all have to uh, remember that there are consequences. The best thing to do is not to not to err and not to make bad decisions, not to do the wrong thing, as opposed to trying to figure out how to lessen the punishment. Okay, that's a lesson for all of us. And um, you know, and then on top of all of that. Um, the creator is going to judge us. And, 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 and he talks about there is no man that hath the power over the wind or the rain, neither has he the power over the day of death. Again, he's giving the glory to the creator. Um, but we have choices. 
We all have the opportunity to make choices, and the best thing we can do is make the right choice in the things that we do. Um, some of us just, um, for our own selfish reasons, do things that just please us. We're not considering righteousness. We're not considering fairness. We're not considering equity. We're just saying, you know what? I want to do this to this person. I want to do such and such. And I don't care who else it impacts. I don't care if it impacts my children. I don't care if it impacts my family. I just know that for me, this is the best thing that I want to do because that's going to make me feel better. But I suggest to you, the most high is going to come after you. Karma is something else. Troubles, when you try to make trouble for somebody else, you're making trouble for yourself. And I pray that people will learn, all of us will understand and know that when trouble hits, don't come crying for a pity party. Just go back and look and see what you did wrong and go back and fix it. That's the best way to get karma off of you, is to go back, bad karma, is to go back and fix the mistakes you made. Sometimes they can't be fixed. Sometimes you don't put yourself in a situation that can't be reversed. I suggest to you that you don't, don't stay up overnight, over, going overtime, trying to figure out how to do somebody some harm. All oh. this have I seen, even applied my heart thereto. Whatever the work that is done under the sun, what time one man had power, what time one man had power over another to his hurt. That's, you see, that, you read that again. All this what? have I seen, even applied to my own heart there too. I've seen all of these things that are going on in the world. And whatever the work that is done under the sun. So he's seen how people are functioning and how we're moving around the earth. And he said, what time, go ahead. What time one man had power over another to his hurt. Taking advantage of people. Taking advantage of power that you have over somebody else. It's going to hurt you or it's going to hurt him, but eventually both of you are going to hurt. Tom Sheep. And so I saw the wicked buried, and they entered into their rest. But they that had done right went away from the holy place and were forgotten in the city. This also is vanity. So either way, he says that if the wicked gets buried, and uh, even, even uh, uh, the one who done right went away out of the holy place, in other words, the person done right didn't stay on the righteous path, and eventually they ended up the same way the wicked did. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Because you know why? The Most High... <laughs> That's why they call it the fear of the Most High. They call it the fear of the Most High because... If you understand the Most High, you should fear him because he's got so many different devices to give you your just desserts. And because we get away with this evil that we do, he's saying sometimes the Most High just wants you to build up your, 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 your demerits. He wants you to build up your negative points to the point where there's, you have no escape. You paint yourself in a corner doing all your evil, and then when it comes on you, you got nowhere to go because you don't even have a window. Okay? And he's saying here, he, say, he says it very clearly that it doesn't come quickly. And so what it does is gives people more incentive to do evil because they think they're not getting caught. You know, if you think you're not getting caught, oh, well, I can keep doing it. You know, but the creator, that means you just piling up more piles of dirt that's going to bury you. Tom Sheep. Because a sinner doeth evil a hundred times and prolongeth his days, hmm. though yet I know that it shall be well with them that fear Yah, that fear before him. I just, I, I didn't even know that was coming. The fear of Yah is the best thing because when you fear the creator, People that do that kind of evil, they don't fear the most high because you would be afraid of what's going to happen because you know you're doing evil. 
you know, it's not what you want to do and you think you could justify it because it's something you want to do. It doesn't matter if it's considered evil. If you've been warned that it's evil and you still think that, well, I'm going to do it anyway because this is what I want to do. Just be prepared for it. Just be prepared for it. But if you fear y'all, you're going to do as little bit of evil as you possibly can. All of us. I'm not talking to just me. I'm talking to everyone in this room, everyone listening, and the people who don't even hear my voice. Think about what you're doing in this day of trouble. Because the way the creator is going to pay you back is nothing that you ever thought of. Just like somebody who was doing evil in Mississippi. They never thought that their whole family, their whole life, and everything that they own was going to go up in a, a funnel of, of hell. And how many are you going to take with you? How many other people are going to suffer with you? Time sheet. What verse, please? We are in verse 13. But it shall not be well with the wicked. Neither shall he prolong his days, which are as a shadow, because he feareth not before doesn't God. Doesn't care. He does, they don't fear the Creator because they think what they're doing is right. There is a vanity which is done upon the earth, that there are righteous men unto whom it happeneth according to the work of the wicked. Again, there are wicked men to whom it happeneth according to the work of the righteous. I said that this also is vanity. You could start out trying to do the right thing, get off track, and you become wicked. You could start out being wicked, do the, do the right thing, and become righteous. But if you got wickedness in there, there's still a penalty to pay. It doesn't matter. Some of us think that we holier than thou. Some of us think that we are, oh, well, I can justify what I'm doing. I hear about justification stuff all the time. And you can't convince them that what they're doing is wrong because they've already made up their minds that that's what they want to do. Scary. The fear of Yah is not in there. It's Because it, the fear of Yah will help keep us from doing a lot of things. I've seen too much in my lifetime not to understand that this is real. These are not just words on a page. Let's go. So I commended mirth, that a man hath no better thing under the sun than to eat and to drink and to be merry, and that this should accompany him in his labor all the days of his life, which Yah hath given him under the sun. And that's according to doing the righteous thing. That's because you got the fear of Yah. So he's gonna, he wants you to have fun. He wants you to be prosperous. He wants you to live a long life. But you can't do evil and think that all of these things are going to come down your path. Time sheet. When I applied my heart to know wisdom and to see the business that is done upon the earth, for neither day nor night do men see sleep with their eyes, then I beheld all the work of Yah, that man cannot find out the work that is done under the sun, because though a man labor to seek it out, yet he shall not find it. Yea, further, though a wise man think to know it, Yet shall he not be able to find it. There's some things that the Creator doesn't explain to us, some things he doesn't want us to know, some things he doesn't want us to understand. But he's got a system in place. Believe me when I tell you, the Creator has a system in place. What we have to do, if we, wanna, if we fear him, and if we want to live a good life and, and, and not bring trouble on our own homes, then we need to just fear the most high. And before we do anything, how's the creator looking at this? Not how do I look at it and what's in it for me. How's the creator looking at what I'm, is, is what I'm doing right? No, is what I'm doing righteous? Because everybody got a sense of right and wrong and they could be different for different people because what your sense of right is could be my sense of wrong. So what, are you, it's what you're doing, is it righteous? Ask yourself, is it righteous? Time is short. Life is short. 
And when I think about innocent victims, it's very upsetting when we, when we do things and we don't think about innocent victims, family, friends, people who love us and support us. And we just do it because we're not thinking about, we're just thinking about ourselves. How does this benefit me? I just, I didn't read this ninth chapter. Let's do it. For all this I laid to my heart, even to make clear all this, that the righteous and the wise and their works are in the hand of Yah. Whether it be love or hatred, man knoweth it not. All is before them. All things come alike to all. There is one event to the righteous and to the wicked to the good and to the clean and to the unclean, to him that sacrificeth and to him that sacrificeth not. As is the good, so is the sinner. And he that sweareth as he that feareth an oath. Okay, so Solomon, you know, would have you think that whether you do good or whether you do evil, you all going to die anyway, okay? That's how he sums it up. But it's not the dying part that's important. It's the living part that's important. How are you living? What kind of life are you going to have? I, I suggest to you that the evil person, the wicked person, and the, and the good person have different lives. Then they all have to die, but that doesn't mean what happens between birth and death is going to be the same for people who live different lives. It's not going to be the same. If you make bad choices, if you do bad things and what have you, you're going to live to be, you might live to be an old age, but you're going to have a miserable life. If you do the right thing, you treat people right, you try to be fair, you don't try to backstab somebody. No, I'm not. <laughs> you don't try to backstab somebody. The creator is going to bless your, bless your efforts and the things you strive to do. That's what we got to understand. We have to make sure that we make better choices. Hold on. Let's read on. Got a lot of time. This is an evil in all that is done under the sun, that there is one event unto all. Yea, also the heart of the sons of men is full of evil. Full of evil. And madness is in their hearts while they live. And after that, they go to the dead. Yeah. Okay. Again, he's not filling in all the middle part. But trust me, it's in the Torah. If you don't find it in this book, you're going to find it in the Torah. Time sheet. We are continuing in the ninth chapter, the fourth verse. For to him that is joined to all the living, there is hope. For a living dog is better than a dead lion. Heard that line before. For the living know that they shall die. But the dead know not anything, neither have they any more reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. As well their love, as their hatred, and their envy is long ago perished. Neither have they any more a portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. And what about their legacy? What about your legacy? What about, uh, you know, how are you going to leave your children? And your grandchildren, what stead are you going to put them in? Um, I've seen so much, you know, and, um, and I think about people who make bad choices and, you know, they do their time or they, whatever they go through and, and you know, they, their struggles. But you can't help, you can't save your family. You can't save your children. You can't save all the other people that are impacted by you. It could be your parents. It could be your parents. It could be anybody in your life that is a part of your, is a part of your life that are going to be impacted by the decisions that we make. And we have to always consider them before we make crazy decisions. Let's go. Go thy way. Eat thy bread with joy. And drink thy wine with a merry heart, for Yah hath already accepted thy works. 
Let thy garments be always white, and let thy head lack no oil. Enjoy life with the wife whom thou lovest all the days of, thy, of the life of thy vanity, which he hath given thee under the sun, and all the days of thy vanity. For that is thy portion in life, and in thy labor wherein thou laborest under the sun. Whatsoever thy hand attaineth to do by thy strength, that do. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave, whither thou goest. It's like he's given us a blessing. Cohen Levy has this in the, uh, in the, um, the last lines that are in the ceremony, the marriage ceremony that I've heard so many times. But it's not just about that. It's about, again, Solomon talking to us about living a good life, having a good life, and having no regrets having no regrets in the life that we live um, so that we can enjoy, enjoy, enjoy life. But if we're putting stumbling blocks in front of other people so that our life can be better, that's not going to get prosper you. In order for you to have a good life, you know, I've heard people say things about other people, and it's like, in order to make themselves look good, they got to make somebody else look bad. That's the only way they can make themselves look good. It's the same thing. In order for you to be happy, you got to make somebody else miserable. And that's how you're going to get your happiness. How long is that going to last? Let's go. I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding nor yet favor to men of skill, but time and chance happeneth to them all. For man also knoweth not his time, as the fishes that are taken in an evil net, and as the birds that are caught in the snare. Even so are the sons of men snared in an evil time, when it falleth suddenly upon them. You know, it, it, this reminds me of that foolish dentist that killed his wife in order to get the money, in order to get the kids, you know, it's the same. So you have all of this stuff going for you. He says the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, neither the bread to the wise, nor get riches to men of understanding. Because depending upon how you get these different, at, you know, these different things, uh, assets, whatever you want to call them, you're still going to get, something's going to happen. It can happen like that. You can have all of this stuff going on, and then the engine from a plane falls on your house. Because the creator has so many different devices in order to, in order to uh, stop us, in order to wreak havoc on us because we're doing evil. I'm not trying to put you in a bad mood, family. I'm just trying to make us all think. Because every time we come into a new year, every time we uh, have an opportunity to uh, reflect on how we're living, we need to do that. I had a friend. I don't like telling this story, but it's not that bad. But I had a friend, um, it's a colleague, and he was uh, always just cheating on his wife, you know, just having a good time, partying, doing whatever. So one day he was um, sitting in his car and his wife came up beside the car, like to the window and knocked on the window. And he's, he jumped and she said, how you living? Because he reacted so, like he, she said, how you living? How you living? He told me this story. They broke up. And he got her, got her back. They got married, bought a home. And one Christmas morning, he found her dead next to him in the bed. I don't know why. I'm just telling you. So the, he was hurt because 
the opportunities that he had to spend with her. Maybe it was just her time, but the time he wasted away from her or not being faithful or whatever the case might be. Just playing her or whatever, she, the most I took her from him. That kind of stuff scares you if you have a conscience. I'm just throwing that out there. Think about it. How you living? How are you living? Let's move. This also have I seen as wisdom under the sun, and it seemed great unto me. There was a little city, and few men within it, and there came a great king against it, and besieged it, and built great bulwarks against it. Now there was found in it a poor, a, a man poor and wise, and he by his wisdom delivered the city. Yet no man remembered that same poor man. Then said I, Wisdom is better than strength. Nevertheless, poor man's wisdom is despised, and his words are not heard. The words of the wise spoken in quiet are more acceptable than the cry of a ruler among fools. Wisdom is better than weapons of war, but one sinner destroyeth much good. <laughs> but one sinner destroyeth much good. And, you know, these, these words... Just, just, just think about the power of wisdom. Everybody thinks money is power, uh, power is power. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, all of these materialistic things we think are power. Wisdom is the biggest, powerful, most powerful thing you can possess because you know what wisdom does. Wisdom controls. And help you, it helps you through all of the things you're going through. Good, bad, and different. Without wisdom, you're not going to keep money long if you hit the lottery. Without wisdom, you're not going to get any money <laughs> to have. Without wisdom, you're not going to know how to protect yourself and stay healthy. Wisdom is the most valuable thing, but wisdom is the thing that we don't consider when we start thinking about access to all of these other things. If we don't use wisdom to attain them, we're not going to keep them. I just hope and pray that the Most High will continue to give us wisdom. I don't know about you all, but that's what I pray for all the time. Some people's first prayer is, oh Lord, I need a new car, you know? Oh, Lord, I need those shoes. I, you know, I just, I just want, you know, a bigger house. I want set furniture like so-and-so got. <laughs> I want a car like so-and-so got. You better pray for wisdom so that it, the things that you don't need, you won't be praying for. The things that are not going to help you, you won't pray for those things. And whatever you do, don't pray against somebody else. That's all I can say. Let's move on, cheer things up a little bit. We're going to go into some history. So we're going to move on to 2 Kings. And uh, they took some good portions, but they left me with a couple, so I'm not going to complain. And I'll tell you more, I like these portions. We're going to go to the fourth chapter of 2 Kings. I'll just kind of give you a briefing on the first three chapters. And I'm so happy to be able to do this history because these are Moftia portions that I don't get. <laughs> I don't get these Moftia portions because, uh, you know, they, apparently I've graduated from being a Moftia. Unless you come in late, I'll take your portion if you're not here on time. <laughs> but, uh, you know, these are some great historical events that happened in our, in our in antiquity, in our old history, that uh, is really, really beautiful. So in the first chapter, uh, which Zakwe and Yatniel did a phenomenal job last week, he covered uh, 
the chapter regarding Moab and the wars that um, Ahaziah had with them and um, the capture, the, 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 uh, his efforts to capture Elisha, Elijah, I'm sorry, to capture Elijah. And, um, and of course, we had uh, Elisha following him around, waiting for that great opportunity. In the second chapter, Elijah goes up into the, uh, well, first they had the situation with the kings when they were coming after him. And, uh, and the, the kings, the, the 50 men, um, two sets of 50 men that came to get him, get Elijah, and uh, Most High destroyed them. And then uh, talked about that. And then the third chapter was uh, the war that was um, held um, against Moab, which um, uh, Jehoshaphat uh, uh, helped fight um, with the king of Israel, and they beat him down and um, and kind of dis demolished the uh, Moabites. I know it's a brief summary. That's as far as I'm going to go and save time for my stuff. Okay, so let's get into the fourth chapter. Again, we're talking about some of the historical events that took place in the life of Elisha, um, which are really, really beautiful portions. And um, so let's go. The fourth chapter, second, second Kings. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead, and thou knowest that thy servant did fear Jehovah. And the creditor is come to take unto him my two children to be bondmen. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in thy house? And she said, Thy handmaid hath not anything in the house, save a pot of oil. Then he said, Go, borrow the vessels, borrow thee vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels, borrow not a few. And thou shalt go in, and shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and pour out into all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. Okay, so um, I just noticed a message came in. So the three things that a president has to have is he has to, uh, to be president was, um, again, he has to be 35, at least 35 years old. He has to be a citizen of the United States, and I think he has to reside in the country for at least 14 years. But going back to um, this, so uh, so this woman who didn't have a husband um, ran into a problem with her creditors. And, you know, creditors just don't care. You know, sometimes they have compassion and sometimes they don't. Sometimes they run out of compassion and you're at the mercy. So the creditors back then they don't do this today. If you don't pay your bills, they're not coming and getting, taking your kids, all right, you know, to pay off the debt. But they were coming to her to take her children to pay off the debt. So she went to Alicia, and Alicia told her um, to get all of these vessels together. She said, what do I have? I have just a, a, a bottle of oil. He says, okay. If you notice, the one thing he said that was so important, he said, shut yourself in the house. Okay, that has some type of meaning. In other words, nobody should see what's going on. Kind of close yourself in. Don't let anybody walk in while y'all are doing this. Well, for whatever reason, he wanted her to make sure that they had privacy. Okay, uh, and he made that very clear. And then he just, and he wasn't even there. So he performed the miracle without even being there. And she just kept pouring for as many vessels as she had she had oil and she had enough to pay off the debt and enough for her family and i suggest that even after she paid off the debt she may have sold more so she could buy uh, things that she needed however long uh, how many i um vessels that she had and you know some people say oh you know there's no such thing as a miracle or they don't believe in miracles you call it what you want but the creator is in control of everything. He's in control of everything, all the time, everywhere you are. He's in control. Don't forget that. Let's move on. So she went from him 
and shut the door upon her and her sons. They brought the vessels to her, and she poured out. And it came to pass, when the vessels were full, that she said unto her son, Bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more. Oh, yeah. And the oil stayed. Then she came and told the man of Yah, and he said, Go, sell the oil, and pay thy debt, and live thou and thy sons of the rest. And it fell on a day that Elisha passed to Shunim, where was a great woman, and she constrained him to eat bread. And so it was, that as oft as he passed by, he turned in thither to eat bread. And she said unto her husband, Behold, now, I perceive that this is a holy man of Yah, that passes that passeth by us continually. Okay, so now we switch stories here. So now we're telling us another story about the life of, Le of Elisha. And keep in mind that what the um, what the prophets would do is they would have what they call a circuit. So they would go around to different towns, cities, what have you, and then come back around so that they can have a chance to deal with the people, talk to the people, help the people, give them uh, you know information, wisdom, and what have you. So she noticed that he was coming around every so often, and she perceived him to be a man of Yah. And that's, you know, by the way he was moving. And usually the prophets weren't rich people, they were poor, but they had a countenance about them that made it obvious that they were godly people. And she saw it as an opportunity, and she's not even an Israelite. And she saw it as an opportunity to do something for him because she was a kind-hearted person. She also had money, and so she had the means to be able to help him. Okay, so, so, um, no, was, hmm? Shunem, no, she, no, I'm sorry. She was in Israel. I apologize. Yes, I apologize. Um, and so she, she wanted to do something for him, and she wasn't looking for anything in return. She just wanted to bless him, take care of him, and um, you know, help him along his path. And at first, it was just something simple, and then it got to be something bigger. All of this is the hand of Yah. This was for something that was going to happen in the future, and it was an opportunity for Alicia to do what he did. Tom Sheep. Let us make, I pray thee, a little chamber on the roof, and let us set for him there a bed, and a table, and a stool, and a candlestick. And it shall be, when he cometh to us, that he shall turn in thither, and it fell on a day that he came thither, and he turned into the upper chamber and lay there. Okay, so first she was just giving him food, and now she's giving him a place where he can rest, kind of like an efficiency apartment where he can, you know, rest before he moved on in his journeys. Time sheet. And he said to Gehazi, his servant, Call this Shunammite. And when he had called her, she stood before him. And he said unto him, Say now unto her, Behold, thou hast been careful for us with all this care. What is to be done for thee? Okay, so you notice he's not even talking directly to her at this point. He's sending his messages through Kahazi, who is his uh, valet, his servant. Okay, so he's asking, What can we do to repay you for your kindness? Time sheet. Wouldst thou be spoken of for? Wouldst thou be spoken for to the king? Do you want us to put in a good word for you? You need anything? Or to the captain of the host? And she answered, "I dwell among mine own people." And he said, "When then is to be done for her? What then is to be done for her?" And Gehazi answered, "Verily, she hath she hath no son, and oh. her husband is old." Okay, so he's saying that she probably would like a child. I mean, you can do anything. Uh, can you kind of make that happen? But her husband's kind of old, so, you know, can he still produce a child? So he says, so, so Alicia took right advantage of that opportunity to do something for the sister. So he tells her, time sheet. Now, she didn't ask for this child. He just... He just thought it would be something to give her because she had no children. And he said, call her. And when he had called her, she stood in the door. And he said, at this season, when the time cometh around, thou shalt embrace a son. 
And she said, Nay, my lord. Stop messing with me. Thou man of Yah, do not lie unto thy handmaid. And the woman conceived and bore a son at that season, when the time came around, as Elisha said unto her. And when the child was grown, it fell on a day that he went out to his, to his fathers, to the reapers. And he said unto his father, My head, my head. And he said to his servant, Carry him to his mother. And when he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon and then died. Okay, so in this particular case, um, the child got sick. Could have been heat stroke, could have been anything. And um, for all they knew, uh, based on what the mother saw, the child was dead. Okay, now, so let's, let's just read on. I'm going to bring up that point that now you see what I have that for? Okay. All right, go ahead, Tom Sheet. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of Yah, and shut the door upon him and went out. And she called unto her husband and said, Send me, I pray thee, one of the servants and one of the asses, that I may run to the man of Yah and come back. And he said, Wherefore wilt thou go to him today? It is neither new moon nor Sabbath. Now, obviously, this woman had, a, I think, a more spiritual connection uh, to the, not just the Most High, but to Elisha than her husband. He was probably a rich man, wealthy, and he just worked. You know, he did what he had to do as a husband and as a man of, uh, you know, of the household. And yet, she, she just didn't even tell him that the boy was dead. She just said, no, I don't have time to talk about it. I need to get to him, okay? Um, and so she's preparing, the, the, you know, the animals and whatnot and getting her servants to get her to, to uh, Alicia, Alicia as quickly as possible. So he's got, they got to find him. They must know where he was traveling, you know, the route that he took because they went directly to him. Tom Sheet, and I don't know how far it was. I meant to look that up from where they were. Um, I started doing a map thing yesterday, last night, but I, I, I guess I didn't complete it. Tom Sheet. And she said... It shall be well. Then Everything's she saddled, fine. I'll be okay. Time sheet. Then she saddled an ass and said to her servant, Drive and go forward. Slacken me not the riding, except I bid thee. Don't slow down. Just keep going. If I'm right, if I'm hanging off the side of the animal, that's okay. Just unless I tell you to stop, go as fast as you can. So she went and came unto the man of Yah. In Carmel. To, to Mount Carmel. And it came to pass. When the man of Yah saw her afar off, that he said to Gehazi his servant, Behold, yonder is that Shunammite. Run, I pray thee, now to meet her, and say unto her, Is it well with thee? Is it well with thy husband? Is it well with thy child? It was very obvious that she was in distress and she was in a hurry to get to him. And so um, he, he, he obviously picked up on it, but he didn't get a sign that something was wrong, which he will tell us in a second. And she answered, it is well. And when she came to the man of Yah to the hill, <laughs> she caught hold of his feet, and Gehazi came near to thrust her away. But the man of Yah said, Let her alone, for her soul is bitter within her. And Yehoah hath hid it from me, and hath not told me. Now she was angry because she felt that you gave me this son, he's whatever age at this point, and now you're going to, just to take him away? And she didn't want to talk to guys because that's just another t wasted time to have a conversation with the person that cannot help her. So she said, no, everything is fine. She just wanted to get to Alicia so she can explain how, how the anxiety that she was feeling in hopes that, you know, he can explain why is this happening. Tom Sheet. Where are you? Then she, oh, we are on verse 28. Tom Sheet, talk about. Then she said, did I desire a son of my Lord? Did I not say, do not deceive me? Then he said to Gehazi, gird up thy loins and take my staff in thy hand and go thy way. If thou meet any man, salute him not. Don't stop to talk to anybody. You know, Gehazi, you're going to find out he's got a hard head. Okay, we'll find out that down the line. But he's giving him instructions. Don't talk to anybody. Don't sit around and don't worry about trying to be polite. Just keep driving. Just get to the boy as quickly as you can. And if any salute thee, answer him not, and lay my staff upon the face of the child. 
And the mother of the child said, As Jehovah liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. In other words, you're going to have to go too. I'm not relying on Gaazi. Uh, I'm sticking by you close, and I need you to come back with me. Time sheet. And he arose and followed her. And Gehazi passed on before them and laid the staff upon the face of the child. But there was neither voice nor hearing. Wherefore, he returned to meet him and told him, saying, The child is not awake. And when Elisha was come into the house, behold, the child was dead and laid upon his bed. He went in, therefore, and shut the door upon them twain and prayed unto Jehovah. And he went up and lay upon the child and put his mouth upon his mouth and his eyes upon his eyes and his hands upon his hands. And he stretched himself upon him and the flesh of the child waxed warm. Then he returned and walked in the house once to and fro and went up and stretched himself upon him. And the child sneezed seven times starting to revive. And the child opened his eyes and he called Gehazi and said, call this Shunammite. So he called her, and when she was come in unto him, he said, Take up thy son. Then she went in and fell at his feet, and bowed down to the ground, and she took up her son and went out. Okay, so the reason, I, so I have a portion here, because some people think that can happen. First of all, he wasn't dead. He might have been, appeared to be dead, but he was not dead. And I have some instances in the last three months of similar situations where people thought someone was dead. Um, can you put them up on the screen? Please check the speaker icon on the top left. Okay, that's from the... He wasn't dead at all. He was unconscious. Now, people have, people have been revived. They say come from the dead, you know, but you have to do it within a certain period of time because the thing is oxygen that doesn't get to the brain, and it's a, after 10 minutes, you're gonna be brain dead. You might be alive, but you're gonna be brain dead. And once the brain is dead, the organs cannot function but for so long. It may take a while, but it's, you're gonna, you're gonna, eventually they're going to expire. But these three cases, uh, he says he's seen it twice, that particular doctor, but there were three cases that came up this year, to scroll down. I can't see that. In two months, three people have been found alive after being declared dead in the U.S. It's amazingly rare for this to happen in emergency medical. Something. Okay, so we go further down. It gives the three the three instances, I believe. What happens? So in one case, the person was they got to the funeral home, and the person started breathing. Another case, yeah, they opened up the body bag and the person was trying to get air. Um, the other case, is that all it showed you? I may have to go into what I saw. Okay, well, I apologize. All right, there it is. On Monday, a Florida man was found to be breathing after being declared dead by medics at his home. This is the third time this has happened in the U.S. this year. The man, 65 years old, had experienced cardiac arrest, but was found to be breathing again uh, when the sheriff's deputy arrived to investigate the death soon after. This came after an 82-year-old woman was found to be breathing after being transported to a New York funeral home hours after being declared dead earlier this month. Third case, while, in, while on July 3rd, a woman 66 was found to be gasping for air when unzipped from a body bag in Iowa after being declared dead earlier that day. So sometimes you can't get a pulse. You can't tell that the person is breathing and, and they're actually at the body's at rest and the heart might be at rest, but they haven't expired. I'm just showing you that this is not something you can call it a miracle, but it's, it's something that happens pretty regularly that happened with this lady's son. So he might have had heat stroke, he might have had some type of medical emergency or what have you, but by the time the man got there, Alicia got there and performed whatever he thought was going to revive him, it obviously worked. I just wanted to show you all 
this is not as rare as you might think. Time sheet. So let's move on um, to verse 38. And Elisha came again to Gilgal, and there was a Darth in the land. And the sons of the prophets were sitting before him. And he said unto his servant, Set on the great pot, and seethe pottage for the sons of the prophets. And one went out into the field to gather herbs, and found a wild vine, and gathered there of wild gourds his lap full, and came and shred them into the pot of pot, pot, um, pot of pottage. Okay. For they knew them not. Okay, so what he's saying is, okay, so now they're sitting down to have a meal with the sons of the prophets. This must have been cool. Sit around with a bunch of prophets. <laughs> and they had to fix a meal, so they went out and went into the field uh, and gathered food. So one of the guys probably got some mushrooms that will probably had some kind of, you know, I, I don't do mushrooms. Anybody tell you I don't do mushrooms. But anyway, some mushrooms are poisonous. Or they have or very bitter or sour, or whatever the case might be. Uh, you want to tell me what was wrong with those mushrooms, Gabriel? She don't want to talk about it. We got a vegan in here. I don't want to talk about the mushrooms. Okay. So the mushrooms, were well, whatever was wrong with them. So then let's see what happens. Tom Sheet. So they poured out for the men to eat. And it came to pass as they were eating of the pottage that they cried out and said, Oof. Oh, man of Yah, there is death in the pot. <laughs> And they could not eat thereof. It was probably very bitter. They thought it was poisonous or what have you. But they probably just needed a little more salt and pepper. I don't know, some onions. <laughs> Time she eat. And he cast Hot it sauce. into the pot. And he said, pour out for thou, thou, the people that they may eat. And there was no harm in the pot. Okay, so they put something in there and it made it better. Then bring meal, flour, flour, right, okay, exactly. So they just had to add something in there to kind of dilute the bitterness or what have you. What do you say? <laughs> Talk in the mic, man, Talk in the mic. Don't leave me up here, harm, uh, you know, at the mercy of the family and you talking in the back. All right, let's, so that's another situation. Now we're gonna hear about another story uh, in verse 42. And there came a man from Baal Shalisha and brought the man of Yah bread of the first fruits, 20 loaves of barley and fresh ears of corn in his sack. And he said, give unto the people that they may eat. And his servant said, how should I set this before a hundred men? But he said, give the people that they may eat. For thus saith Yehoah, they shall eat and shall leave thereof. So he set it before them, and they did eat, and left thereof, according to the word of Jehovah. So they, again, he extended the meal to feed everyone that was there. Now this is a very interesting story. Um, and yeah, we want to cover this one. I'm not leaving this for somebody else. <laughs> now, Naaman, we're going to chapter five, my Lord. Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Aram, was a great man with his master and held in esteem, because by him Jehovah had given victory unto Aram. He was also a mighty man of valor, but he was a leper. Okay, so now we're dealing with these, the uh, Amorites had a king, uh, had, so they had a captain of the host, Naaman, and, you know, he was a great man very highly esteemed and but he was a leper okay so but he's a man of valor and he had a very very close relationship with the king so anything he needed i'm sure the king would help him with it so now the amory the um go ahead in chapter what are we verse two i'm sorry verse two right and the arameans had gone out in bands and had brought away captive out of the land of israel a little maid and she waited on Naaman's wife. Okay, so they go out, they capture, you know, you know, Israel, we're always in somebody's captivity. So the Arameans go out and they, they get this young maid and she comes in and now she's now a slave, a servant to Naaman's Isha, okay? She's a servant in his household. 
And she noticed the guy has leprosy. Time sheet. Three. And she said unto her mistress, Would that my lord were with the prophet that is in Samaria? Then would he recover him of his leprosy? Okay, that's not a question. So she said if he was if he was in around the prophet Elisha, uh, he could, you know, that's in Samaria, he could probably cure him this of this leprosy. Well, of course, she ran and told her husband, and he ran to the king. Four. And he went in and told his lord, saying, Thus and thus said the maid, that is, of the land of Israel. And the king of Aram said, Go now, and I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. Okay, so they, um, king of Israel, that's another story. But, <laughs> so he says, okay, I'm going to give you a letter, take it to the king of Israel, and the king of Israel will talk to this, this prophet. But the king of Israel doesn't like the prophet, okay? He don't respect the prophet. And so let's see what happens. Time sheet. You know where you are, my lord? You're at five. Okay. And he departed and took with him ten talents of silver and six thousand pieces of gold. That's a lot of cash, man. And ten changes of raiment. Look at all the stuff that they So this king had money. And he had a lot of respect for Elisha, um, for, for, for Naaman. And he was willing to give all of that stuff so that Naaman could get cured of his leprosy. Verse 6. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel, saying, And now when this letter is come unto thee, behold, I have sent Naaman, my servant to thee, that thou mayest recover him of his leprosy. Now, I don't know what he was thinking. The king can't do it. Okay, it was supposed to go to, uh, to Elisha, time sheet. And it came to pass, when the king of Israel had read the letter, that he rent his clothes and said, I can't fix him. Am I Yah <laughs> to kill and to make alive, that this man does send me unto recover a man of his leprosy? But consider, I pray you, and see how he seeketh an occasion against me. He's thinking, you know, because again, all of these guys are constant enemies. So he's thinking, why is the king's doing this? He's going to use it as an occasion to start a war, pick a fight. Why are you expecting me to cure him of his leprosy? Well, Elisha is going to obviously get wind of this, and he's going to respond, time sheet. And it was so, when Elisha, the man of Yah, heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, that he sent to the king, saying, Wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Let him come now to me. I got this. And he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and with his chariots and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in the Jordan River, in the Jordan, seven times, and thy flesh shall come back to thee, and thou shalt be clean. Okay, so he, Elisha brings him all the way over to his house, and he says, he sends somebody out. Just tell him to go wash in the uh, Jordan seven times, and then you'll be clean. Well, he wanted some big elaborate ceremony, maybe some salve or something to put on him. He wanted more attention. This is what happened when you get to be high and mighty. You want that type of treatment. So he wanted this elaborate treatment, which he didn't need. Tom Sheep. But Naaman was wroth and went away yeah. and said, Behold, I thought I he would wish. surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of Yehoah, his power, and wave his hand over the place and recover the lever. Are not Amana and Farfar, Farfar, rivers in Damascus, and the rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of he's, Israel? He's really smelling himself and he feels, you know, like I could have done this anyway. First of all, you don't know what it's going to take to cure you or you wouldn't be walking around with leprosy. So why didn't you go jump in those rivers and cure yourself? So at this point, see, that arrogance can be a bad thing. It can be very harmful. When you start dismissing people, you know, because of the way they look or whatever the case might be, and that maybe he just didn't understand. He's even saying, he could, oh, he knows the creator because he says he should have prayed to the most high and waved his hands and did a, a bunch of hocus pocus. Okay, so again, you never know where a blessing is going to come from.
You never know who's got the power to solve your problems. That's why you don't dismiss people. But Tom Sheet. May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in, in a rage. He didn't, wasn't even thinking about doing that. And the, Jordan might have been just a, a block or two away. Tom Sheet. And his servants came near and spoke unto him and What's said, What's the matter with you? My father, if the prophet had bid thee do some great thing, wouldst thou not have done it? How much ra rather then, when he saith thee, wash and be clean, then went he down and dipped himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the saying of the man of Yah. And his flesh came back like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. Now, that's a miracle because leprosy doesn't get cured after seven dips in, uh, in the Jordan, okay? Um, so... Again, humility is a wonderful thing <laughs> in a situation like this. So Tom Sheet, now he's going back and he's grateful. Now he's going back and he's grateful. Tom Sheet. Verse 15. End out soon. And he returned to the man of Yah, he and all his company, and came and stood before him. And he said, Behold now, I know that there is no power in all the earth, but in Israel. Now, therefore, I pray thee, take a present. Of thy servant. Did he say, I'm sorry for being such a fool? But as, but he said, as Jehovah liveth before whom I stand, I will receive none. He said, I, I don't want anything in exchange. All of this stuff you brought, I don't even want it. I just want to perform. See, that's what a real servant of Yah does. They don't try to get paid for doing the job that they get, that they've been assigned to do. Now, sometimes they need to get paid, but in this case, this man wasn't about the money. So he says, I don't want anything. I don't want to take it from you, and you can go on your way. I've done what I'm supposed to do. Tom Sheep. And he urged him to take it, but he refused. And Naaman said, if not, yet I pray thee, let there be given to thy servant two mules, burden of earth. For thy servant will henceforth offer neither burnt offering nor sacrifice unto other gods, but unto Jehovah. So he says, from now on, if I can't give you a gift, give me some ground, some soil, so that I can have enough soil that I can get on my knees on the soil that's in this area and pray to the Most High and nobody else. He said, now, my king is going to be expecting me to do certain things. But I just want you to know I'm going to be praying to the Creator, and, and that's the only God I'm going to serve from here on out. Tom Shee. In this thing, Jehovah, pardon thy servant. When my master goeth into the house of Ramon to worship there, false and, gods, and he leaneth on my hand, and I prostrate myself in the house of Ramon. When I prostrate myself in the house of Ramon, the Jehovah, pardon thy servant in this thing. And he said unto him, go, in, go peace. in peace. So he departed from him some way. Okay, so he, he, he wants to get the blessing of Elisha before he leaves because I know I'm going to end up stand, you know, in this particular situation, but I'm doing it as a servant to my, to my boss, to the king. It's not that I'm praying to this, this God because I already know that God didn't save my, uh, you know, cure me of my leprosy. So I'm giving the glory to the Most High. A beautiful thing that he did. Now, Gehazi, slime ball. Go ahead. But Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, the man of Yah, said, Behold, my master has spared this Naaman, the Aramean. Why are you going to let him get away and don't pay for this stuff? And not receiving at his hand that which he brought, as Jehovah liveth, I will surely run after him and take somewhat of <laughs> he him. He said, I'm, listen, I'm his servant. I, I was here too. Uh, I'm going to get paid. Why should he take all of this stuff back and nobody, and we don't get some of it? I, you know what? As the most high lives, I'm going to go get some of it. I can't get it all because I can't sneak it all back. If he thought he could get away with bringing it all back, he would have done that. But he got what he could put in his pockets, you know, and he probably wore a big garment. And you might have wrapped some stuff around them. You know how the people do when they go in the store and steal? You know, they wear wide clothes, and then they tie everything around their waist, and they walk out with, a, you know, they might buy a, you know, a pen or something, 
you know, and they, they stocked up on the stuff. Okay, so this is, he's trying to pull some, does he, for, this is like children. D did he forget that the most, that, that this man sees everything, you can't fool him? And then he's looking for his servant, he done disappeared. Where's Gehazi? I need some water. <laughs> Where's Gehazi? Time sheet. Somebody said, oh, Gehazi just ran down the road behind those people. Time sheet. So Gehazi followed after Naaman. Mm -hmm. And when Naaman saw one running after him, he what alighted happened? from the chariot to meet him and said, is all well? And he said, all is well. My master has sent me. Saying, now he's lying. Go ahead. On Behold, top of sneaking off. Now he's telling a lie. Time sheet. Behold, even now there are come to me from the hill country of Ephraim. There's some people need some clothes, some clothes. Some people need some clothes and some silver. Two young men of the sons of the prophets, give them, I pray thee, a town of silver and two changes of raiment. So he don't even want, he's not even taking it for himself. He's acting like he's doing this for somebody else. And Naaman said, be content. Come on, take, take two talents. And he urged him and bound two talents of silver in two bags with two changes of raiment and laid them upon two of his servants. And they bore them before him. So they're carrying the stuff back with him. Time sheet. And when he came to the hill, he took them from their Oh, hand. he said, okay, now y'all go back. I got this. Y'all leave me. I, I'm just going to have to lug it myself because I can't let, I can't let um, Alicia see me coming back with y'all. He's going to get suspicious. And when he came to the hill, he took them from their hand and deposited them in the house. Mm -hmm. And he let the men go and they departed. But he went in and stood before his master. So now he's gone. He done dropped everything off in the house. Y'all know how thieves do. He done dropped everything off in the house. And now he's walking up in there, cleaning up. Let me see. Make sure I ain't got nothing on. You know, make sure I don't have nothing on. All right. Let me, uh, let me go in there. Yes, my Lord. What do I, what can I do for thee? And Alicia said unto him, where you go? Where you whence, been? Whence comest thou, Where you coming Gehazi? from, Gahazi? Where you been? And you know how said, you are as a parent when you're a, child, a smart parent? You see your kids do something slick? Investigate. You know, you even think they did something slick? Investigate. The last thing you want to do is ignore the fact that, well, I don't know what they did. I know you did something. No, I'm going to find out what you did. This is what, this is what Alicia's doing to Gahazi. And he said... Thy servant with no wither. I haven't been nowhere. I'm, I'm, I've been here all the time. I was just in the bathroom. And he said unto him, Went not my heart with thee? <laughs> I go with you. When the man turned back from his chariot to meet thee, it, is it a time to receive money and to receive garments and olive yards and vineyards and sheep and oxen and men servants and maid servants? We supposed to be servants of the most high. Now you trying to get paid for something. I'm paying you to work for me. And now you trying to get a little, what they call a side deal going? A side deal. Hooking up a side deal. And he didn't do anything to earn it. Time sheet. The leprosy therefore but, of Naaman shall cleave unto thee and unto thy seed forever. Mm. And he went out from his presence a, a leper, leper as, as white, white as snow. snow. What's the lesson there? Stay in your lane. All praises to Yah. Hope you enjoyed the history. Time for me to step down. It, greed is a terrible thing. Greed is a terrible thing. And if not for you, you know, we talked about this already in the prophets. I mean, in the, in the Proverbs. But I'm going to let Cohen, you finishing out? Who's finishing out? Mr. Ray? All right, so family, family online, thank you for sticking around. Hope you enjoyed the Shabbat day with us. We appreciate you. We thank you for being a part of our service. May y'all bless and keep you all family in here. Continue to do the right thing. Y'all bless you all is my prayer. And for the family online, if I don't get a chance to speak with you before Ravii, have a blessed Passover, a blessed Kogmatso, most high bless you all and see God. And we're going to give you the link for the Passover service. Cohen will be sending that out in the next day or so. Hallelujah. Shalom, shalom, family. I can't even carry all of this stuff. Grab my.
No, I am dead. It's a long day. I gotta take this smile with me. Cut it off. Hold up. Shalom again. Hallelujah. Let's give it up for Asar once again. Thank you, Ho, for his words. At this time, we begin to close out our portion of the Shabbat day by singing the song Shema, followed by the congregational prayer following our song booklet. The song Shema. Shema. Yes, congregational prayer that will be shared online. Sacrifices and meal offerings are not found in our hands. Father of mercy, yet thy law standeth firm. Accept the words of our lips and the murmurs of our hearts. Receive our prayers of mercy and in favor. Grant us joy and gladness. Comfort thy people. Yehovah answer thee in the day of trouble. The name of the power of Israel set thee upon her. Draw us not away, Yah, with the wicked, for our delight is in thy word. Let thy word heal us and cause us to prosper. Cause thy wisdom to blanket Yisrael. Let the visions of the righteous be our lot. Yea, even the dreams of our deem our good fortune. Draw us with cords of love and let our borders be true. Into thy hand I commit my spirit. All praise unto thee, O Yah. We have thought of thy loving kindness. We rejoice in the house of Yah. Come behold the works of Yah and rejoice in the same. For he had rescued his people, Yisrael. He has called for the dispersed of Yah, quote. He caused his righteousness to stand where calamity was. For such is our power forever and ever. He will be our guide henceforth eternally. Sing his praise aloud. Hallelujah. Shema. Shema. Yes, right. Elohinu, Elohi Abotinu, 
Elohi, Avraham, Yiskak, Yisrael. Unto you, Yehovah, we give all honor and all glory. For there is none like unto you in the heavens above, in the earth beneath, or the waters beneath the earth. Thou hast truly been a great and a wonderful power. We thank thee, Yehovah, for continuously being with us. And we thank thee for this beautiful holy Shabbat day that thou hast been in our midst. We thank thee for the words of the speakers, Yehovah. We thank thee for the praises that we send forth unto thee in thy courts of heaven. We pray that it's fine acceptable before thee. We pray that thou may accept the offerings of our lips and accept our strivings to do thy law, thy statutes, and thy commandments. For you are truly a prayer here in power. We thank thee, Yehovah, for all the things that thou hast blessed us with throughout the last few days and for allowing us to even at sundown see a new week. We take none of it for granted. For life in itself is not promised to any one of us. It is because of your graciousness, your kindness, and your tender mercies. We pray unto thee, Yehovah, that thou may continue to be with the sick in Yisrael. Continue to strengthen them and give them the healing that they need, O Yehovah. For you know them by name and you know their hearts. Continue to answer the cries and the prayers of all of those that are crying unto thee for healing. We pray that thou may be with the fatherless. Be with the poor, be with the needy, be with those that know not where the next meal is coming from. For thou, O Yehovah, has given us choice. When we go into our cabinets and our fridges, we have many different foods to choose from. We take that not for granted, Yehovah, for there are many that only have a single meal on their, on their plates. There are many that are without food. We pray that thou may forget them not, Yehovah, and provide for them. We pray that thou may give us a spirit to strive to continuously give a lending hand to those that are without. For we know not what tomorrow has in store. For we can be well today, and tomorrow we can be without. But we pray unto thee, Yehovah, that thou may find us acceptable before thee. As we strive to be righteous servants before thee, we pray that thou may continue to give us the strength, the perseverance, the willpower to push on through, despite we find so many obstacles around us to distract us from being righteous servants before thee. Yehovah Elohim, we thank thee for this new year that thou hast blessed us to see. We thank thee for this holy season that's upon us. And we pray that thou may bless us to see the, the, the day of Pesach and the Feast of Unleavened Bread, that we can come before thee and reflect on the time of which thou hast freed us from the land of our captivity, the land of Egypt. We ask of thee, Yehovah, that thou may continue to free us from these lands of captivity and return us to the land of Yisrael that thou hast given unto all four parents. But first, we pray that thou may bless our hearts and our minds, that we will be ready for this return. For we have been given so many chances before to do right before thee, we've blown it every time. But in this day and time, we pledge ourselves to strive to be better than our fathers. As we read the history, we do not only just read the history, but we look at it and try to see ways in which we can do better, to be a better nation before thee, a better servant before thee. We ask of thee, Yehovah, that thou may touch our spirits and allow us to do better. Yehovah Elohim, we ask of thee that thou may continue to forgive us for our shortcomings. We pray that thou may continue to even accept our prayers that we send forth unto thee. As we close out this holy Shabbat day, we pray that thou may be with those that are spiritually asleep. Awaken them that they may know that thou art a true and living power, and beside thee there is none. We give thee, Yehovah, all praises. We give thee all honor and all glory. And we pray that thou may even accept this prayer as we say unto thee in the holy tongue, not only on our behalf, but on behalf that are of those that are not here and those that know thee not. Hearken unto these words as we say. Baruch Yehovah, Babo Queer. Baruch Yehovah, Bezor Rahim. Baruch Yehovah, Be'erev. Baruch Yehovah Balaila, Baruch Yehovah Yom Yom Uvaruk Yehovah Tami, Yehovah Elohim Uvakwasha, Lishloak Lanu de Kol Devarim, Raim, Shiasim Lefneka Yom Yom, Weyote Marako Alaila Aze, Levaan Shimka Yehovah, Elohe Avraham Yiskak with Yisrael, Elohe Avotin with Eli, Lishmoak Nikolina, Im Teseroka, Leva an shimka Yehoa. Yivareka Yehoa, we yishmareka. Ya ir Yehoa panaoleka, we kuneka. 
Isa Yeho Panao Leka, we are similar car. Shalom. May Yehoah bless thee and keep thee. May Yehoah cause his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. May Yehoah lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Hallelujah. The 150th Psalm found in our city of Orient and it will be shared online. Oh, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, the choir show. Hallelujah, there we are, go. Hallelujah, big God. Hallelujah. 